lined up and ready to go for the Sandown 500. We can take a look at the Fuso grid and also tell you who will be starting in these cars. Mark Winterbottom claimed pole position. He'll get the drive first up. So will David Bernard. On row two, Todd Kelly will start. Car number 22, Craig Baird gets the first drive in car 16. Lowndes will pilot triple eight and Owen Kelly will step in ahead of Stephen Richards in car six. Stephen Johnson gets the drive in car 17, while Paul Radisich gets the first up duties in car number one. Looking further back and Greg Murphy will be in the Tasman Motorsport number 51 entry. He'll be sharing that today, of course, with Jason Richards, Luke Gilden. Dean Canto is going to start in the 33 GRM car. Remember Lee Holdsworth, his teammate was the last round winner. Looking further back, Max Wilson, Alex Davison will be at the helm of their respective cars. Stephen Owen gets the start driving car 55. Cameron McConville in car 50. Jason Bright has decided to give Adam Macro the first duties in the Fujitsu Racing. Remember that Jason Bright is one half of the defending champion team here. Greg Ritter will start in car 34. And Glenn Seaton will kick us off in his first championship drive for the general. Jason Bargwana paired with Grant Denyer for this race. Bargs will start with Kane Scott on the uh, car number 11. Shane Van Gisbergen and Simon Wills. Paul Dumbrell will start this car, car number 20. He's partnered with Paul Will, while Paul Morris will take the first stint with Steve Ellery. Alan Gurr and John Bow will be the starters from that row. Fabian Coulthard and Mark Noski will pilot car number three first up. And in position number 31, we find Team BOC car number 14 with Christian Merchison and Damien White with Damien to get the first up duty. So there you are, you're informed. We welcome our international audience through New Zealand, through Motors TV in Europe and North Africa, through Neo Sports India, Pakistan, also throughout the US. Thanks for being with us here for the Sandown 500 first step of the endurance puzzle for 2007. Three weeks away, we will go to Mount Panorama for the big one, the super cheap auto Bathurst 1000. Just confirming for you all the details. 161 laps here, it's 500 k's on the dot. And strategy will be the big, big key along with the weather. Uh, talking about strategy, Matty boy, there's something extra for uh, the Holden Racing team to think about. Poor Todd Kelly, we've known that he's been sick all week. He's got a gastro bug and he's been treated last night. He was actually on the drip and the doctor is waiting out the back of the garage here with the drip to bang him on during the day if he needs it today. But just while the cars were sitting on the grid, he was that crook. He actually had to get out to the car head back, spend some time in the bathroom, very upset in the tummy, and then jump back in the car. That's how hard he's doing it today. This is going to be a mammoth effort from him if he can get through this race. Well, the, the Sandown 500 is also synonymous with weather. They seem to go hand in hand. Well, what has Toll HSV done to get the edge? What they've done is actually hired a friend of Rick Kelly in a helicopter to fly around the region, believe it or not. This guy will check the wind speed, where the weather is, and if he sees rain on the way, he'll radio ahead. The team at FPR, not as a Labyrinth. They've got a bloke in a Fort Territory somewhere barked in Victoria with a laptop and Google Earth and a mobile phone, but I'm sure it does the same deal. A couple of, a couple of things to watch out for on the grid. Both Stone Brothers cars and also Craig Baird in car 16, Owen Kelly in car 6. These drivers are not used to starting these races with full 120 litre tanks and also the tall diff ratio. Watch for them off the start. And car 14, Damien White, will start from pit lane. The car did not make it out before pit lane closed. All right, thank you, boys. Aaron Newton, Daniel. Gibson and of course Mark Moretta patrolling the pits for us throughout this race. Mark made mention of uh, the troubles that Todd's been having this weekend. He had a shocking night last night and uh, he was back on that drip again this morning and his wife Christy also had to contend not only with an ill husband but their child Mason was quite sick as well last night so it's all going on in that cam. Shannon's fly cam will give you a wonderful view as they Come up to the front straight out of turn 10. See the grid positions there, and it does raise the questions about starting. And do you take the gamble to put the non regular driver in for the first stint? Pole position, front row, pointy end of the grid. It's always important, but remember, this is 500 kilometres. their spot. They lock it in. 
Todd's one of the regular runners. Winterbottom, of course, is a regular to the series. So is Craig Lowndes. So is Greg Murphy. Many of those around them are making small appearances. David Bernard in car number four. Mark Winterbottom in car five. Behind them, Craig Baird and Todd Kelly. And we are set for the first enduro of 2007. And who will get the first jump? The Sandown 500, Mark Winterbottom takes advantage of his pole position and will push it down well to turn one. Great start for Winterbottom, Todd Kelly too. Bernard Bogdan initially, one of the tall HSV cars, went right back in the pack and Lowndes has a run down the inside looking strong. Lowndes went with Todd Kelly and they have swapped Bernard. He's dropped from second back to fourth. Too deep they go. One of the rear cars decided to go off at turn one. I reckon it was Craig Baird that dropped back through the pack in the 16 car. A little shortcut from car number 20. That would have been Paul Dumbrell and John Bow. It's a nice welcome. Good gap for Winterbottom at the end of the back straight. Cold tyres for all. Big heavy fuel load, 90 kilos over the rear of the car. Easy to lock a brake, flat spot of tyre. You need to tippy toe a bit for the first lap. Greg Murphy applying some really deep braking. He's right on the hammer of Radisic. Here's the view out of turn 10. Winterbottom goes across. A standing lap of 119.21. Todd Kelly is second. Craig Lowndes third. Bernard fourth. Stephen Johnson fifth. Owen Kelly in car number six is sixth. Then Greg Murphy, Paul Radisich, Canto and Luke Yildon. Stevie Johnson's made a couple of places as well in car number 17, the Jim Beam entry. No surprise to see regular runners filling the first three spots at the end of the first lap. Turns two, three, on the four and down the back straight. He from Todd Kelly's car at the race leader, Mark Winterbottom, has a glimpse in the mirror. A little blip of the throttle, back one gear, fifth. Todd's just keeping an eye on what Craig Lowndes is up to. Zinger replay shows us the start. You can see Winterbottom got a good one. And as Neil mentioned, Todd Kelly was looking straight away. He knew that he got a good start as well. And Craig Baird dropped a whole bunch of spots down to 11th at the end of the first lap. And by this stage, David Bernard thinks, I may as well let Lowndes go through. Otherwise, I'll end up too wide at turn one. Smart driving. Didn't get the best at starts. But he protected enough his position. First flying lap and the fastest one recorded by Todd Kelly. 112.7, six one hundredths quicker than Mark Winterbottom. He's closed the gap marginally. They're coming up onto the back straight. This is turn four. Todd Kelly, a winner here in 2003. That year he partnered Mark Scaife. Scaife, we know you're watching at home. Hope you're recovering well. section of this circuit. Remember a big tailwind for these guys down Brock Strait, the front straight. Caught many people out in the warm-up this morning. It's a ripper of a breeze. It's getting upwards of 75, 80 kilometres an hour. So it really pushes the rear of the car going down to this turn one braking area. But conversely, when you go up the back straight, you can break unbelievably deep up there. 12-4 for Todd Kelly on that lap. Again, trading times with Mark Winterbottom. Car triple eight of Craig Lowndes. Three-time winner, 96, 97 and 2005. Pretty speedy compared to last year. The opening laps of last year's race were run in mid to low 13s. They're in the 12s at the moment, mid 12s. 
This man has made up two spots. His starting grid position of five. He's third. Ahead of him, Todd Kelly. Ahead of Todd, Mark Winterbottom. In his 50th championship start, what a way to do it from pole position. He was with Jason Bright in 06 when they claimed the trophy. That was Frosty's first ever victory in the V8 supercars. Now he's partnered with Matt Halliday. This is David Bernard, who's been doing a lot of racing in the New Zealand V8 series. He was a regular, of course, in this championship for quite a while. I had a chat to him the other day. He said he just loves being able to get over there and have the, the fun of racing without the pressure that is the V8 Supercar Championship. Now he knows that pressure is back on this round and for Bathurst. Todd Kelly is certainly not letting Mark Winterbottom go anywhere. 12-4, the last lap for Craig Lowndes. So a couple of 12-4s showing against Todd's and Craig's name. 12-5 for Mark Winterbottom. They'll just be starting to get a feel now for the way the cars are behaving. Tyres have come up, brakes are up. Remember, the cars are very heavy right now, and so they've got their rear anti-roll bar adjusted accordingly to carry that extra weight. Stephen Johnson goes through. You see the team, the cars are uh, all single file at the moment. Car 10, Jason Barguana. Car 2 is Glenn Seat. John Powers behind him. How's that for a pairing of experience in two cars? And Alex Davison in car number 18. Two DJR cars. Davison started from 13th on the grid. His brother Will and his partner Stephen Johnson started from 7th. Car number 6 of Stephen Richards and Owen Kelly has Owen under some pretty fierce attack from Greg Murphy. Look at this. It's a freight train. Stephen Johnson's at the front of it. He's got a tiny little gap over Owen Kelly. And it looks as though they're all ganging up led by Murphy, waiting to pounce on the Castrol FPR car. Radisic is behind Murph. Lock up for Owen Kelly. Murphy now edges up closer. He can't get it done there, but he certainly knows the opportunity will come. A warning from Matthew Nielsen, the engineer on car 16 to Craig Baird. He is stressing patience, patience to the Kiwi. He's stuck in a train of cars. He wants to look after this car to hand it over for Garth Tanner to double stint to the chequered flag. It's a fair old gap too that Winterbottom, Kelly, Lowndes and Bernard have pulled out. A drag race down the front straight. Into turn one. Car 88 of Alan Simonson is the one that you can see right now. And then Richard Lyons did a good job. Richard qualifying 14th. And there is Steve Owen in the Autobahn entry. So you're looking around positions, 12-13. Luke Yildon in oh car nine. Job. The enforcer will step into that car. Luke's job. Keep that position, if not better. They've been paired up for the last three years. Here's a dive on the inside now for Greg Murphy, who takes out some of the tyre barriers, but manages to control it and get the job done. On Stephen Johnson. Aggressive driving from Greg Murphy. He took Radisich with him as well. Nice move. You'll find that typical mindset in the endurance races is to be a a little more circumspect than you might see in the sprint races where there's typically more panel damage and you'll have a dive that could result in contact. You don't want to make contact in these races early or you'll carry a bent steering arm or some other drama or be forced to take an early stop. Not what you need. Now it's Dean Cano in car 33. He's trying to round up Junior Johnson, but take a look at uh, the Castrol, uh, the Caltex entry of Luke Yildon who's really got the hammer down. A 29-year-old from Melbourne. Him and Russell Ingle didn't have a great time at Sandown 
in 06, but they made up for it at Bathurst, the fourth placing. New fastest lap of the race, Mark Winterbottom, a 112.3. It's a 0.6 margin at the last lap. Ingle, should I say Yule? That's an easy trap, isn't it? Looking at these car colours, pinches the front left down into turn eight. Stephen Johnson here, this is the final corner. Dean Cando tucked up behind. As you can see, first mate, concentrate on your exit. Concentrate on your exit, you're a bit weak in that middle sector. You can do this, you'll be fine. Steve Johnson radio, 12-3 now for Todd Kelly. Oh, oh could drop a spot here. Yeah, a bit of crisscrossing going on for Yulden and Canto. There's another look. Muscles him out of the way. Oh, could end up pretty ugly, but they managed to control themselves. Simonson got caught up in the mess. Yeah, it has a little ricochet effect down the pack. Kind of rippled through all of them then. Cameron McConville. And the other super cheap car, car number 50, started in 16. David Reynolds. A lot of people willing to tip these guys. Valvoline, Cummins entry, car 33 of Dean Canto and Lee Holdsworth. Well, Russell Ingle, your teammate Luke Yulden out there, you've raced together a fair bit, but what did you tell him before he went out? He's on fire. Yeah, absolutely. I said to him, look, don't mess around with this one. Like, there's no championships on the line. Like, let's just go out there. Don't be intimidated by anyone. If anyone's slow, get them out of the way and get, get on with it. Because, to be quite honest, there's some pretty average steerers out there and, and we won't put up with it. Like, just get on with it. That's what he was doing. He's playing fair, though. He's doing good. And, uh, mate, he's listening to me. I like him. I like his style. <laughs> we love yours, Russ. Get in there, elbows out, and get into it. Luke Gilden has made up one position from his start. He's now in ninth. We're on board with Todd Kelly. Todd's working that drink hose pretty hard, isn't he? Well, he has to. Big chance for a lead change coming up here. Kelly's definitely got a bit of pace over the top of the hill and down into turn eight. Chopped another tenth off in there over the course of that lap. That's the difference. That's what 0.3 of a second looks like. Mounds playing it smart and doing it alone behind them. David Bernard holding on to fourth spot. Just run you through the order as it is at the moment. Winterbottom, Todd Kelly, Craig Lowndes. Bernard comes into picture in the Geldwin Motorsport entry. Owen Kelly fifth, Greg Murphy. Made up a few spots, three in fact. He's sixth. Paul Radisic is behind him in seventh. Then Luke Yulden, Stephen Johnson, Dean Cando. That's your top ten. Just observing Winterbottom's car off turn eight, then just a little loose in the rear. So he has a second kick at the brake pedal then to also get the nose on line. He's using a lot more exit space. Be smooth, pal. Be smooth. Matthew Crawford to Todd Kelly. Mark Winterbottom's using a fair bit of exit space at both turn 10 and turn 4. Pit crew's limbering up. There's an aerobics class going on in FBR. Or is it yoga? You wouldn't know either. Might be a ritual for... Um, a rain dance. Yeah. <laughs> Highlights the fact, though. I oh, the helmets are too tight. <laughs> no, he keeps saying all year it's a team sport. Oh, mate, Never more so than at these rounds. He 
has. And also Marks just pulled away a touch, a fingernail, more away from Todd. There's Bernard still in the picture. He's fighting his own battles within the cockpit of illness has managed to put a fair bit of pressure over the course of the last couple of laps on Winterbottom. Stevie Johnson dropping down the timesheets too, boys. The reason for that is complaining of too much oversteer, the rear breaking loose. They're actually trying to make some adjustments on the run. Having said that, they also think it could be to do with that full fuel. He's got five spots. Starting spot at seventh, he's down to 12 now, Stephen Johnson. Coming to picture now, there he is. Slotted behind Craig Baird and in front of Alex Davison in car 18. There was a lot of confidence in this camp. They came here on Friday, they were happy with the cars straight away. And now Alex pulls up alongside Junior and will take it to him at turn one. The gap at the front is 0.58 of a second. Max Wilson takes advantage of Junior's misfortune as well. He's being absolutely eaten up here. Position after position. Jason Barguana had a look. Cameron McConville knows that he's susceptible as well. They're like vultures. It's an angry pack, this group here, isn't it? These are awkward circumstances for a driver because you've got to drive your own car, manage those in front of you and around you, behind you. You've kind of got to look every which way. That's what Glenn Seaton's doing. And they're doing it at the end of the back straight, I might mention, at 265 kilometres an hour. Down to Dandenong Road, northernmost end of the circuit. Turn eight. Oh, Johnson has decided to pull out of that one. He knew that he couldn't go anywhere. Speared across to the left of the track and just let him go by got too much on him. He's really scratching, isn't he? That's Glenn Seaton stuck by. To give you an indication of the intensity in this field, we spoke to Glenn last night on the way back to the hotel. He was only half a second off Todd Kelly in qualifying yesterday. It was a difference to make him 20th. Look at Paul Morris's car here. He's got some drama. Uh, he's had contact front and rear. You see the big crunch at the front of the car and, of course, the right rear panel is all buckled under as well and smoke coming out as it rubs up against rear right wheel. Stephen Johnson, by the way, lost six spots in that one lap. This may unfold for us. What happened? Yes, there'll be a crunch, 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 crunch. Okay, company, you know. yeah, Morris cops the worst of it. He was just unfortunate there and uh, he's currently yeah, discussing... The front wheel, guys, take the cheese grade aim, please. And the others do that. We're waiting for you, mate. He's contemplating, obviously, coming in for a look and see what the dramas are. Interesting to observe these two at the front because they're doing it very differently. Winterbottom's using a lot more exit space coming onto the front straight and the same going onto the back straight. So at turns 10 and turn 4, you watch Mark versus Todd. They're going about their craft in quite a different way. Great pressure race between the two of them at the moment. Meanwhile, at FPR, they're managing to limber up. performance racing guys as you can see a very slick team they've been one of the slickest teams in pit lane all year but this is the extent they go to they are stretching up getting ready for their first pit stop i speak to chris o'toole their crew chief he was saying that they explode during the pit stops and in the lead up they're just worried about hurting any muscles or straining so the idea is with the stretching gets them focused on what they've got to do gets them loosened up and ready to go and helps bring the team together clever stuff i think you should get in there barrettes i'm stepping in limber up here dancing with the stars adventure they're into it early, the good 40 or more laps away from the stop, but maybe they'll do a bit more of it. See Winterbottom here using the concrete apron on the exit. Good way, mate. Good job. Good. Bad news for Sarah, mate. Paul mate. Morris is in the pits. They are now down one lap. They've changed four tyres. They've pulled the front piece of the grill out, but they haven't made anything with the bonnet here. They haven't bothered to touch it. Now they're jumping on it. They're still here. They're down a lap, though. Paul Morris and Stephen Ellery. Copper hard blow. They 
They worked their way through the field here in 06 from 31st up to 8th and also managed a top 10 finish at Bathurst. Lowndes is chipping away at the lead guys as well. And David Bernard's handily placed. He's just in a nice, comfortable spot at the moment, not being disturbed by anybody. Clean air, able to drive the car neat and straight. Dean Cano up to eighth position now. Good start to the race for him. Great outing at the last one for this team. So the order, winner bottom, Todd Kelly, Lowndes, Bernard, Murphy. We knew that they'd be strong. Murphy and Richards, then Radisish, Owen Kelly, Canto, Yulden, Simonson. So both the Vodafone, uh, Vodafone cars well positioned early on. You can see there that Dean Canto's been consistently eating into the times of the car in front of him, Owen Kelly. Dean made his first real mark actually here in 1998. He won a one-hour production race before the main event. That was at Maserati. Six years later, he had his first V8 drive here as well. Mark Winterbottom is having his battle with Todd Kelly. Position number 16. So he stayed steady from the start. It's a wonderful shot, isn't it? Hasn't had a great year at all. Cam in the uh, 2007 championship is. Only managed 16 points. It's been a tough drive for him. He's had an old car. He's partnered with David Reynolds here for this race. He's a 25-year-old Carrera Cup driver. We've seen him in the Porsche category, but he'll make his debut. When Cam steps out. Evidence of pressure around him looks as though he's just doing the job. In front of him is Max Wilson, behind him, Glenn Seaton. Winterbottom leads the race by half a second from Todd Kelly, Lowndes is third. There's a bit of a gap between Lowndes and David Bernard. Greg Murphy is fifth in the Tasman Motorsport car, making up four spots. Paul Radisich is sixth, and I can tell you that Dean Canto has got past Owen Kelly. Stephen Johnson shuffles further down the order. He's now down in 26th. Now make that 27th. Let's drop another spot. Paul Dumbrell. Car 11 is Kane Scott. And there's 39 of Fabian Coulthard and Chris Pitha. The Irwin Tools entry of Alan Gurr and Warren Luff. See the damaged car number 67. This is uh, just a devastating blow for Stephen Johnson. Start at seventh. And by my count, that would put him 28th. DJR have come in to find out what's going on here. 
Yeah, Matty, the boys were looking at it uh, during the break. Of course, we had it going slower and slower in a straight line. They started to ask him to use the gear override. They're also looking at the gearbox oil temperatures. It was jumping a degree every lap, but the car have just made the, the, the fateful decision now to bring it in, try and work out what it is to get it back out there, and some hope is still being in this race. Let me tell you why they took such a drastic course of action. Junior started from seventh on the grid when he pulled in there for that excursion into pit lane he'd already lost 21 spots just picking up a bit of radio conversation in the background and uh, i think there's also an issue with the brakes on the uh, stephen johnson car as well so they've got all sorts of dramas there this gap meantime has narrowed they're both in the high 12s and todd now starting to have a look just thinking about his options coming out of turn four the orcon number five car looked a little bit taily as Todd Kelly decides to get closer and closer and put a little bit more pressure on Mark Winterbottom. Dick Johnson just came over and whispered in my ear, front brakes have seized on the car. That's why it was going slower and slower and slower. Unbelievable. Isn't it? It's give us a good indication of what's going on on the timing monitor between Kelly and Winterbottom. The gap for the last lap was 0.4. It stays that way, but just the attitude of the car in front of him. I think Todd Kelly knows that when he wants to take a move, if he wants to take a move, he can have a go. But G. Winterbottom has confidence. Right up behind him. Returns two, three, up to four. Take it out wide over the ripple strip. Now the FPR car pulls away situation remains the same. Craig Lowndes is in third position. David Bernard is in fourth. Greg Murphy is fifth. Remember, he started ninth. He's doing a good job in Tasman Motorsports car number 51. So too is Paul Radisic. Partnering Rick Kelly this weekend. Remember, Rick Kelly and Garth Tander have split. Championship battle is on. They're first and second. A puff of smoke out the rear of Winterbottom's car. Good job, Todd. Good job, mate. He's here on halfway through. He's here, mate. He's here on halfway. Good job. That is a good job. He's cut the gap from 0.4 of a second down to 0.28. Shane Van Gisbergen has been shown the bad sportsmanship flag too for hitting the cones too often at the end of the back straight. That was the news that Todd wanted to hear. He's halfway through that stint. He really just wants to do a good, good job and get out of this racing car. This is a really, really brave drive from Todd Kelly. We talked before about being able to look in detail at these cars and some of the technical aspects. The problem at Dick Johnson Racing, this is the front end of a V8 supercar. We're looking here at the brake caliper, the bridge across the back of the caliper, and then those blue items, that's the bridge. The blue items are the pads. And so for some reason, for whatever reason, the pistons inside the caliper are activating the pads. The gold things are the pistons, six of them across both the calipers and they're squeezing the brake pads onto the disc rotor and slowing the car up. So some hydraulic or mechanical issue in the car, perhaps even back at the master cylinder or in the pedal area. And, uh, that's the problem area in the car and that's the reason why DJR have got the 17 car in the garage at, at the present time. It was quite bizarre to watch, wasn't it? It's like Junior was in reverse. Boys, you were talking about, about Todd Kelly earlier on. The good news is that he's a classic race car driver. He's telling the crew in the pits that uh, now that he's out in the car, he's actually feeling better. <laughs> so he's going along OK. But he was very crook, as you know, before the start. Ducked out of the car, went to the bathroom as quickly as he could, got back in and drove. He's not 100%. What the team is watching is his lap times. If they start to drop off, drop off they'll know he's fatiguing and they'll get him out. That was a telling shot to Barretts. On board with Todd Kelly, he just certainly doesn't look 100%. This is a tough, tough way to spend a Sunday. The adrenaline of being in this car will certainly lift him. Like I said, this is a very brave performance. 
It's actually not as cool as we were thinking it was going to be. It's about 18, 19 degrees on out there at the moment. Little patches of sunshine from time to time. That's not helping. Not helping Todd's cause at all. And we know that the cockpit temperature is going to be dramatically above that. Lounce has crept up just a little bit there. The back end of Todd Kelly. David Bernard, pretty much from the word go, has been out there in his return to V8 supercar racing all alone. No pressure left or right. Greg Murphy, Paul Radisich, Dean Canto go through. There's Owen Kelly, Luke Yulden in ninth. Tenth is Alan Simonson. Here's Steve Owen in car 55. Craig Baird, partner in Garth Tander, has some pressure from Alex Davison, Mark Warner. Now we've got McConville. Max Wilson has been overhauled by Glenn Seaton. That was for position 16. Actually, Max is slowing for some reason there. That's a brand new car this weekend. And they've got a flat right rear tyre on that car. So we were Johnny on the right spot then, just as we went oh. back through the field, all of a sudden caught the problem at the back of this car. It looks like the rear bumper has dragged onto the tyre and popped that tyre. Greg Wright has just got out of car 34. He has got numb legs, a problem he had at Bathurst last year, and Cam McLean takes over, stalls the car lead from the pits. They were worried about their pit stop windows and making 54 laps on fuel. They've got a bigger concern now with Greg Ritter. Yep. So just recapping for you, Greg Ritter out of the car, numbness in his legs. It is a problem he's had before, isn't it? it is. Cameron McLean, 39-year-old regular, enduro-only driver. He's now in the seat of car number 34. Winner bottom, Todd Kelly, Craig Lowndes, that's your top three. And at the start of these races, we know that we've got a lot of fuel on the back of these cars, 90 kilos or 120 litres. And in that condition, they'll run the rear anti-roll bar blade full stiff. Here's the blade here, we'll zoom in and have a look. That's the item there, that's the full stiff position. Now, as the fuel load comes off and they're burning about two litres a lap, they'll gradually start to soften the blade and by rotating it into a flatter position, it gives more and allows the bar in the foreground to twist. It makes the car a little more compliant, just lets it roll around a little bit more. That's in the stiff position and what we previously saw when it was flat was in the soft position. We'll hear commands on the radio shortly as drivers are asked to ease the rear bar off. Kelly continues to get encouragement. So just keep it out there, keep it steady. Right now he's decided to be a bit more aggressive. Well, racing team has pulled out the sledgehammer. Okay, get the wheel on, one of his safe. These three lead cars are really locked together in terms of speed. And Bernard continues to lap very well, just hovering. Come on, guys, get it on, let's go. No time for messing about in pit lane as Max Wilson, and his partner Michael Caruso, the 24 year old, will be making his debut in car number eight. That means that over five years, Max has been driving here, it's his fifth different co pilot. Car 021, Shane Van Gisberg and the Team Kiwi entry is going to get a black flag for consistently hitting the tyres at the end of the back straight. So he'll have a drive through to serve and that will hurt. Paul Radisich in fifth position. So he has overtaken Greg Murphy. The rat started eighth, pushed it up a few. He's got past Murph behind them. Dean Canto in car number 33, but the battle, since the word go, has been Winterbottom, Kelly, Lowndes, and also Bernard. The question is, can these guys start to move up and put themselves in position? Todd Kelly and Lowndes, and Max Wilson in front of them after his uh, problem with the rear. Right. Lap of 100 
161. this Kiwi battle going on at the moment. Radisic versus Murphy. Owen Kelly versus Luke Yildon has been pretty good too. Eight versus ninth on the track. Alan Simonson and Steve Owen. Tenth and eleventh. Seaton at John Bow. It's position 16 and 17. So both of those guys have Made up a fair bit of ground. John Bauer has collected 11 spots. 36 seconds it takes to depart the track, transit the lane, and rejoin to your original timeline profile around this racetrack. So that hurts and puts you in a position where you can be vulnerable to going a lap down very easily. That is to boo in the main game at Oran Park. Shane Van Gisbergen was in the points in race two. And certainly our Kiwi viewers will know his teammate, John McIntyre. And to illustrate the point, here come the leaders. So Van Gisbergen right on the limit at the moment of being in the clutches of the leaders and dropping a lap. There's cone markers at the end of the back straight. Remember we looked earlier in the telecast at turn six and said that was a spot where there's a bit of a wild ride to be had. Well, there's markers up there and if you repeatedly hit them He's be bad flag, mate. there's the markers orange cone markers and if you keep whacking them there's an observer up there and we're on it and he'll wiggle the finger at you Mark Winterbottom was the one talking about black flags I'm Maybe he's concerned about Wilson in... He's still in the air and stuff, mate. We just need to get on a bit quicker. OK, now I understand what he's saying. Mark Winterbottom's saying that the preceding car is disturbing the air. OK, mate. You've got to do your best. And I, I mean, they're not going to move a car out of the way when it's that far down the road. And... What Mark Winterbottom's got to be careful of is he doesn't begin to get really frustrated and uh, then make a mistake because he's all excited. The balance of the car going. Yeah, um, very slippery in the rear. I'm just looking after it a bit. Seven, Shane Price and Jack Perkins. Shane started this race. Like when I get out there, you can see your kids fighting back at me. Somebody should be opening the bonnet and checking the fluid. Power steering drama and uh, an issue here for Glenn Seaton. He's gone wide at turn one. He's asked whether or not he should come in, but I think uh, unless he's got a huge flat spot on the tyre, he's just managed to rejoin down there prior to turn two. So that. So whatever the problem is, Glenn's saying it's now okay. Maybe there was some other issue that sent him off the road down there. Tell you what, he's given up a position, as you saw there, to John Bow. Bow now moves up to 16th, which means that he has collected 12 spots from his starting position of 28. Well, Steve Johnson, that's just bitterly disappointing. Mate, it is. It's... Uh... Unbelievable, you know, we've had a pretty good strike right with uh, reliability and, um, you know, we've been struck down by a very, very strange one at that. We're talking about the car with oversteer and then we're talking about gearbox oil temperatures and the whole thing and then we find out it's seized front brakes. Yeah, what it seems to be is um, in the main brake line we've got a, a little valve called an inline knockoff valve and what that does is when you hit ripple strips and curbs, but the flex of the hub and the wheel and everything normally pushes the brake, brake pads back in the, in the caliper and when you get to the next corner, that's why you, you have a long pedal sometimes. And these 
inline knockoff valve stop that, and it, what's, what it's doing is failed. And when, every time I get on the brakes, it's okay, but when I get off the brakes, it's not letting the fluid back up to the reservoir, which in turn is just holding the front brakes on, and that's why the cars slow down the straight, very oversteery, because it's still got you know, quite a quite a few pounds of pressure on the brakes as I'm driving through the corners. Hard luck, Steve. I know they're going to try and at least try and rectify the problem and make it a bit of an endurance practice for, for Bathurst. Yeah, that's the cut. You know, we really need to sort out why this problem occurred now. And, you know, obviously our race is over today and we're not going to get any points. But if we can solve this problem, we had a good stand down last year and a bad Bathurst. Hopefully it's the other way around this year. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, mate. Exactly right. Hurts on a couple of fronts there for both Stephen Johnson and Will Davison. Will eighth in the championship. Stephen 12th, so they'll leave here without any points. Saw there was a problem before with the Jack Daniels car with the power steering. We can look at the steering rack on these cars here. That's the steering rack. And uh, they're looking at the mechanical issues related to the rack at the moment. There it is isolated away from the front end of the car. And they're also looking at the hydraulic system. They're just checking the fluid levels as well. And that's what it does. It moves around and there's the control arm at the top of it. So. That's the area in the car that they're working on at the moment. They've taken it to the garage. They'll work on the problem, hopefully have it rectified. You don't often see steering dramas with these cars. Meanwhile, back at the front, the situation remains the same. Mark Winterbottom leads Todd Kelly, who is in front of Craig Lowndes. Fair way further back. On the back straight is David Bernard, fourth. They're getting right up close now to the back of the preceding traffic. Remember both Wilson and Van Gisbergen have been into the pits. Wilson for that right rear tyre. Van Gisbergen served the drive-through penalty for touching the cones too aggressively too often. They're almost in an awkward position of being lapped at the moment. Off turn 10, starting in second gear, working all the way through third, fourth, fifth, and in briefly in sixth. 255 odd kilometres an hour. Turn one, mid corner speeds about 115 kilometres an hour. It's a third gear corner, briefly grabbed fourth, 170, back to second gear. Very complicated, a little bit of track here, turns two, three, four, all hovering around the 100, 115k mid corner speed mark. 75 k's then onto the back straight, then it's a long run. Well, you've come off the rear bar a little bit, have to think about it, if it's no better, um, yeah, put it back to full hard. Yeah, just trying to get these bloody guys run. Clinton Wilson saying, let's ease that rear bar. Remember, we looked at that earlier, trying to get some compliance in the back. Winterbottom's car has been sliding a little in the rear, but Mark's beginning to get frustrated by the cars in front. He can't fray at the edges too much. They're not going to shift them out of the way for him. He's going to have to deal with them, and he's beginning to get pressure from the cars behind into turn nine. 100 k's across the face of this corner, about 80 here at turn 10. It's a busy racetrack, no rest, and if you're Todd Kelly and you're not feeling well, that doesn't help the cause, and a lot of bumps there coming yeah, onto the front straight. Yeah, we're looking at a bait, unfortunately, on TV, it doesn't look that bad. The frustration level of Mark Winterbottom is continuing to rise with this traffic in front of him, but like you said at the moment, there's nothing he really can do about it. Well, his own team then saying, look, it doesn't look that bad on TV. That was a polite way of trying to get him to just relax a bit. Paul Radisic has been so steady. He's in fifth. This is Luke Yildon, ninth. Car 88 of Alan Simonson is tenth. Steve Owen, there's Craig Baird. Alex Davison, Jason Barguana, Ken McConville. On the subject of lap speed, just checking through the data here, and at the moment Max Wilson's actually matching and in, in some instances improving on bettering the speed being set by Mark Winterbottom. Race Control have that information at their fingertips and that's one of the reasons they won't be inclined to show him the blue flag and make him move over. Very important drive this weekend for the man we're on board with, Craig Baird. Car number 16 with our championship leader, Garth Tander. Confirmation that it turned out to be a hydraulic issue with the number seven Jack Daniels car. It's a power steering pump failure on that car. So it wasn't any of the mechanical gear that we were looking at. It's been absolutely everywhere. 
the Kiwi Baird this season. Part of the uh, uh, mate, you've gone the wrong way. If you want to drive, go back the other way to at least 3.1. There you go, go the other way. You're talking about rear anti roll bar adjustments, so fiddling with those blades, and that was Matt Nilsson talking then to Craig Baird. He's down in 12th, paying heavily for that tardy start. are on on car 18 and uh, the pressure is on car 16 as the reigning Carrera Cup champion Craig Baird a very experienced V8 supercar driver as well his seventh start here at Sandown he was with Jason Barkwana in 06 they finished seventh they also finished top 10 at Bathurst Alex Davison has had three starts here and he is also doing double duty in the Porsches for Jimmy Richards. So there's a lot of interaction in the three cars that you can see on screen. Ben and Davison drive against each other all the time in Carrera Cup. Barguana and Ben is a teammate in 06 for the Enduros. Right now, with positions 12, 13 and 14, you can see it's every man for himself. Back to the front we go with Todd Kelly and Mark Winterbottom. Well, look at the back of Mark Winterbottom's car. As he turns it in, it slides a little and it drifts gently across the face of the corner. That's hurting the rear tyres. Yeah, pretty average when I slip behind those cars. He's not going to let go of the car wing, is he? Look, I mean, they're, they're 100 metres in front of him now. It's interesting, Neil. That's the closest gap we've seen over the control line for the start of this lap. 0.16 seconds. Hey, that. We're on lap 41 at the moment, mate. Doing a great job. It's the closest that uh, Todd Kelly has been. Uh, I reckon that uh, FPR will consider either knocking half a pound out of their rear tyres for the incoming tyre set, or maybe making a rear roll centre adjustment on that car. Gap now, 0.3 of a second. Lowndes crosses the line in third. David Bernard has gone across in fourth, so those positions stay the same. Radisic, Murphy, Canto, Owen Kelly, Luke Yildon and Alan Simonson. Make up our top ten. change the rhythm of what's going on at the front here, Matthew, as other cars get mixed up in this. We've watched the gap seesaw. Winterbottom's been very unhappy about the traffic around him. The back of the Winterbottom car's a little loose at the moment. Even on turn-in on occasion, you can see the car skating. That's allowing Kelly to get very close. And car number triple one, John Bow, is going to get the bad sportsmanship flag for belting the cones at the end of the back straight. So it's really hotting up here in the top three spots between Winterbottom, Todd Kelly, Craig Lowndes. Lowndes is right in there now as well. Wilson's showing good speed in this car in front. It's a brand spanking new car this weekend. That stop hurt him and it's put him in striking distance now of going a lap down. 
Neil, we asked the question about what they'll do when they bring Mark Winterbottom in. You mentioned the car is a bit tailly and not all that happy. They're not actually going to do any changes. No rear roll centre adjustment and nothing to tyre pressures. The reason for that, he said the car's just been a bit unsettled. The brakes have got hot in traffic. He's just carrying a bit too much speed at the moment into the turns. Jamie Winkup's been limbering up, ready to get into that triple eight car. It looks pacey. It is. I'm more nervous in here than what I am out on the track, but uh, Craig's reported the car's handling beautifully like it has all week, so we're, um, you know, everything's looking pretty good. We just can't wait to get in there and get rid of some of these nerves. A lot was made pre-race about this being your car and essentially your race. What's the plan from here? A double stint? Uh, maybe, yeah, it's a 50-50. Depends on safety car around the time of when we're about to run out of petrol. But uh, if I've done my designated laps, then we may put Craig back in. If not, I'll stay in. But uh, I've concentrated on a quick car for qualifying. Craig's focused on the race car. So, so far, he's done a pretty good job. The car's really quick. All the best. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Obviously, plenty of focus on that team and that car in particular. Jamie third in the championship, Craig fourth, the defending Bathurst champions. Just keep an eye on the focus of the rear of the Winterbottom car here, just sliding here and there in different spots. All oh, damage, more damage on car number 67, Paul Morris. Big damage, slides off the road. Race controller actually monitoring that at the moment as well. Wide contact, car number 25. Uh, Adam Macro in that car. Big trail of blue smoke here and the braking approach to one for Morris and just skates wide onto the grass. Fortunately avoids the gravel and is able to continue. And here we go again, exit turn four, back straight. is just ideally positioned at the moment, not having to eat up too much car and just did a watching brief. Remember we made mention before of the problem with the Jack Daniels car and they took the car away to replace a power steering pump by courtesy of Harrop Engineering and Clayton Sturman. We've had a look here around the place and we found a power steering pump for you located on the front of the engine. I should stress that the Harrop CAD drawings are not necessarily a reflection of every team's interpretation of how they do things, but that's where the power steering pump is located on the car. Larry's setup might be a bit different. Typically a V-belt pulley drive pump. Simple thing, been changed on the car, and uh, car number seven is back in the field once again with that replaced. I like the new gears, mate, don't you? It's good, it's cool, it's a beauty. Todd Kelly really being tested to the limits of his physical endurance at the moment. 45 laps in. And as Neil mentioned, it's sunny conditions, so he'd certainly be sweating it up in there. Point three of a second. Mark Winterbottom was campaigning quite strongly ten laps ago to have Max Wilson removed from in front of him, but it hasn't been a successful campaign. He's had to continue to dial around and at the same time hold off the pressure of car 22 behind him. Looks like Mark Winterbottom has just got the car a little straighter than he had about five or six laps ago. Either has made a cockpit adjustment or just settled down in his style a little bit. I'm not seeing the signs of the car sliding quite as much as it was, but it's okay, curious to see. Getting this lap, mate, for driver change. Brake. Wow. Be careful the gear lever when you get out. And uh, reset the uh, brake balance for that when you come down the mate. Wow, that's a Copy surprise. That, Copy that. Pitting this lap for Winterbottom, so they, they make the brake bias and rear anti-roll bar adjustments in advance for the incoming driver. So it's more rear brake bias, stiffer rear bar. That's a surprise. So Matthew Halliday will be standing by. 
was interesting to observe the amount of road that Winterbottom was using. There's the control line for the 40k. Listen, you've built up completely. Brakes balanced back. We're going to do driver change. Don't touch the brakes or gear stick. Once you get nice and tight into the move, I've got to fill it up. The indicators on for Mark Winterbottom. A job well done from pole position. Out he gets. Halliday in. 28 year old they're Kiwi. Doing, they're doing pads as well. So we're inside the. No, actually, we're not. I said. Pump the pedal, pump the pedal. I'm starting to look around in the computer here and they're pump, pumping the pedal up. I don't think they're inside the compulsory stop window for, for pads. No, it's not 48 to 120. Yeah, turn your co-driver light on. Co-driver light on. So that might just be precautionary. Or a practice run. I was confidently turning around to look at the computer then to say, oh, we're inside the compulsory stop window for pads. And then I saw the number and it frightened me. <laughs> I backed out of it again. Now the job becomes this man's. He hasn't uh, worked out how to turn the indicator off yet. And that's the least okay, of his worries. Need to flick the indicator off. Uh, the indicator is indicating that you're turning right. <laughs> Let's just fix that Clinton Wilson on the radio. Right, Matt Halliday at the helm. Now this fella's done some champ car racing this year for Conquest Racing. Didn't have the budget to go on for the whole season, but a seasoned international driver and that leaves Todd Kelly in command of the motor race with Craig Lowndes in behind Nathan Pretty standing by to get into car number 22. I reckon this fellow will be pretty happy to get out of the driver's seat. What about the job he's done? Probably it's fantastic, hasn't it? Just been sensational. He does well in endurance racing. Good record recent years with both his brother and also with HRT. Second here at Sandown in 06, second at Bathurst as well with Rick. And Swayman, smooth, be smooth mate. And a winner of both these big races here in 03, Mount Panorama in 05. He's been a top class performer. We know he's tough, we've seen that come to the fore today. He's done a terrific job under trying circumstances. Nathan Pretty will take over shortly. Oh, back of the car for Todd was really skating through turn four then. As we look at Lowndes trying to mow that gap down. Just as Todd turned in, it skated while he still had a bit of brake on and he rode it out, but that means he picked up the throttle a little later than he would have wanted to. Back to fifth for Lowndes at turn six. You hear those curbs rattling underneath the car, third, second, down for turn eight. You can see the gap now narrowed right up after the little slide from the 22 car onto the back straight. Mark Winterbottom, a fantastic run in the car. Just wondering why we stopped early. Was it always the plan to stop for, for, for pads twice, yeah? Yeah, it is. It's, um, yeah, these guys are nailing the pad stops, so um, really that, that's not going to take too long. Uh, I started the car, I did, I did my little stint, give Matt his 54 laps and I'll jump in at the end. So, uh, see what the weather does. We'll, uh, we'll look good or we'll look bad, but um, uh, it's nice to lead the motor race by, you know, by not much, but we had a quite a good gap on fourth. So, if there's no safety cars, we're we'll looking all right. Good luck. Thanks, mate. Uh, he's looking all right. He's had a good solid run from the word go. Todd's going to stop this lap as well. But Jack Daniels' car, number 11, was high and wide at turn one there. Kane Scott at the wheel at the moment. And uh, so we're expecting Todd Kelly to come in. And that'll leave Lowndes in control with quite a margin over Bernard, who's begun to discuss on the radio the notion of stopping. With the mid-corner speed there for Lowndes. Hungry uses the curve, bounces over it. We watched the car closely yesterday. And its behaviour across the kerbs and riding kerbs is a big part of lap speed on this track. Look pretty nice. What does Todd do? Does he peel off? Yes. Green 
CPS light will mean the nominated co-driver is in the car when it's switched on. They will pretty much drag Todd Kelly out of this car. They're doing pads too. They're doing it inside the CPS, so that's a, a box tick for them. Nathan Pretty is in the chair. Squeezing back the pistons pulling out the worn pads. They need to get the pistons a long way back in the caliper because the incoming pads are full thickness. Making sure he's got... This bloke straight out the back. And they're making sure that the driver's got pedal pressure before he arrives at turn one. We've seen blokes over the years arrive down there and not be able to stop. And Todd's going to leap straight into the truck and straight to the doctor that's awaiting him. 54 laps. Todd Kelly. They do a systems check now with Nathan Pretty. Yeah, he's on air. Got cold tyres. He needs to feel the condition of the car. The track will look a little bit different to when he was last on it. Just play himself in. Drove with the Young Lions. Bathurst in 2002, but this is his first drive for HRT. for this car, Matthew, too much smoke. So they'll have to bring it in this lap, have a loose oil fitting or some issue that's uh, trailing smoke behind the car, a little oil leak perhaps. His uh, partner in crime this weekend is Christian Murchison. We've got the call up with Bradley Jones out with a back injury. The car doesn't sound too good in the background. No. Call from Damien, wasn't it? Yeah. Get the Gojax ready. He was turning in at the time. There's Kim Jones. Didn't have much faith Check in it up, guys. Let's have a look. I'm not going to fix that line. That's uh, Matthew Boniface, engineer in the team, just uh, on the radio. Damien White leaps out from the development series and Ute Racing and a very successful kart racer. So drove with Brytek back in uh, 2005. Craig Baird in car number 16, which is the championship leading car of Garth Tander. Incidentally, Matthew Halliday is in front of Nathan Pretty. Matthew's 15th at the moment, Nathan's 19th. Lowndes leads the motor race, and he's released now. He doesn't have anybody else around him other than perhaps cars that he's lapping but of those that he was battling they've vanished and he's got a nine and a half seconds uh, lead over David Bernard. here with pads the number three entry the mark noski entry find ourselves adjusting to endurance mode impulse is to go, say jason go. richards but it's not turn on your green tire light watch your pit lane speed pump the pedal up mate pump that pedal up tell me you got a pedal yes i have got a pedal mate thank you okay Reset fuel, reset fuel. Okay, close, I get 
Triple Eight have now done the stop for Lowndes and Wind Cup, and okay, that's critical. That's we're all full stop. So Halliday is in front of Wind Cup, and there in the background you see Nathan Pretty. So FPR effectively lead the race. The rest of the stops are cycling through. This will be Tander in. Remember, those teams that have got their driver, their first driver, pass the pedal, pass the pedal. Go, 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 go. Past lap 54, that means the next driver, who can do no more than... Pump it, pump it. Clear, mate, exit clear. Next car will be in Tasman. That pedal, pump it. Finish the story in a sec. Just let all this flurry go by. Richard Lyons goes in car 88. Alan Simonson now, out. Alan, I need you to make sure you've got a brake pedal. I need you to wind your bias to the rear. Come to the rear of at least uh, eight clicks, mate. And car 33, Dean Canto. Horrendous <laughs> pursuit to Lee Holdsworth. First key. Go! Turn your green light on and watch your speed. Reset fuel, Lee. Reset fuel. Button on the steering wheel to reset the fuel meter each, the count for the fuel. Well, Glenn Seaton, great to see you back in the driver's seat for the Sandown 500. How was it out there? Yeah, it's pretty hectic, really. When you're out for 12 months, you do um, you do feel it a bit. But uh, no, it's pretty good. The car was the car was good. It was just going like clockwork, and we just try to settle into a rhythm and, and keep going around there because it's a long day and 500 k's around here is pretty hard work. It is a little bit unusual to see you driving a Holden. How was it for you? This is my first experience of starting at Holden. It's been good so far. They've been a fantastic team. Great cars, which have shown that with the results they've been getting throughout the year. And it's great to be a part of them, especially to go to Bathurst with them. It's great to see you back too. Well done, Glenn. Thank you. Glenn Seaton in his 204th championship start gives the wheel over to Tony Longhurst. He's in his 191st championship start. This is Garth Tander back in the seat of car 16. We're going back to that earlier point. Those teams that managed to get their first driver past lap 54, you therefore have 107 laps to go, and you can't do more than 107 laps per driver. It affords the incoming driver the opportunity to double stint. So it just gives you an extra little advantage strategy-wise. Good, solid job from Luke Yildon. Roll centre adjustment on the back of the number nine car pad change. This will be the compulsory pad change for them. New helmet colours for Russell Ingle this weekend. 29-year-old jumps out. 43-year-old enforcer is ready to go. Uh, indicating we want pedal pressure. Pump the pedal. The new pads are in. Pumping. Pumping those pistons out of the caliper. Bringing the pads up to the disc brakes. He let us know early on in the race. This is all about winning these ones. The championship pitcher isn't of concern to Russell Ingle. He's 10th on the list. So it's about getting the Enduros in the bag. Go get him, he said to Luke Yildon. Now he has to get him himself. Triple Eight had a fantastic stop, but about 110 litres of fuel on the car, so she was just about bone dry. Craig Lowndes, how did it feel? The air car was quite good. We uh, got away to a great start, which is always the, probably the, one of the most important things in Enduros. But we got away, clean start running third for the most of my stint there, just having a good look at uh, the HRT car and obviously what uh, Frosty was doing. But uh, the pace had dropped off a little bit towards the end where we probably would have liked to push on a bit more, but really the car is, is working really well. I got held up a little bit in that right that last lap before I came in. Well, the Morris car went off and a one and, and we got held up a little bit, but uh, other than all, the car is good. Just quickly, are you done for the day or is Jamie doing a double stint? Don't know. I have to ask the boss. We've got a couple of strategies at the moment. Depends on safety car and what happens with the rest of the race. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. It's always the way. Thank you, Craig, and thank you to Gibbo. Plan A, plan B, plan C, and then plan weather. That reset fuel command that you're hearing in the background zeroes it on the dashboard of the car and correspondingly on the telemetry back in the pits. And uh, they then start again fresh with 120 litres and they keep an eye on that burn. Here's the Jack Daniels car, number 11 of Kane Scott and Marcus Marshall. This is the pad change that the calipers are used to squeeze back the pistons so they can then get the old pads out. They need to get the pistons right back to get the full meat, full width pads back in. Okay, go, 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 go,
They've got radio comms with them. Jason Bright off the road. Big, big moment for Jason Bright and the Fujitsu entry. And damage. And deep into the sand. Hasn't been behind the wheel long. Adam Macro did the first stint. So the man who won it here in 2006 with Mark Winterbottom. Sorry, guys. Is now all busted Sorry. up. The Zinger replay will unfold what happened at turn one. Can you just turn it around. Looks like it. Went in there with a big rush though, and there's no sign of any, any brake block. Lucky he didn't end up rolling the thing then. It's plucked the uh, air dam off the front of it. It looked worse from behind, and we've gone safety car. Car at the moment. Pump the brake pedal, pump the brake pedal, pump the brake pedal. There is such touch. Go, go! Oh, he stalled Started. it. Go, 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 go! Flatten it! That's car number one. The Rick Kelly and Paul Radisic. Make sure that pedal's up. WPS Chrysler safety car has control of the field. We're on the 61st lap of this 161 lap race. Matthew Halliday is the race leader. Jamie Wincup is in second place. Nathan Pretty is in third place. Rick Kelly is in fourth. Jason Richards fifth. Lee Holdsworth sixth. Then Owen Kelly. Garth Tander. Jason Bargwana. And Andrew Thompson. That's the top ten. Chance for everybody to just take pause. And interesting to look at the different way that different teams have gone about this event. Adam Macro talking to Chris Jewell from Brightech. Remember, he's just got out from his stint. They had a successful test at Winton just last week. That's where they rearranged their driver pairing to bring Adam into the car with Jason Bright. And there's his teammate Jason Bright. They're now going to extract that car. Need to bring it back round and blow all the gravel out of it and replace the front end, which is a simple job. Bit of a miracle effort yesterday. There's an Allen key carried in the cars on the left hand side near where the passenger would normally sit to be able to remove that front air dam. And when Jason's car broke a gear lever, unfortunately it stayed in the neutral position and it stopped at the end of the back straight. So he reached over and no, grabbed the... Look fine, Jason. Just the split has been off. He grabbed the Allen key and used it to jam the thing in gear and uh, got himself mobile and was able to continue in qualifying but ran out of time to get to where he wanted to in the field. team dragging car 25 out of the ditch it's been that kind of year for Jason Bright two steps forward one step back oh. the added pressure of being a team face. boss as well and as well to not pick up any shit and maybe keep a little bit of heat in the tyres and the 34 of uh, Cameron McLean and Greg Ritter. Bump. Just go! That's just speed. The 
retrieval team has done a good job to get him out of a deep, deep ditch. And this is the reason why. You can just see him on the Zinger replay. He exits pit lane. So now the trouble starts to come. Whoop! And off he goes. And that is carrying a lot of speed deep, deep, deep. The end of turn one. Adam, that's, that must really hurt. You just got out of that car. You kept it on the lead lap. The fuel mileage was good too, and then to see that. Yeah, unfortunately, um, something must have gone wrong or um, a brake problem of some sort, and uh, Brody's put it in the sand trap. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, uh, you know, a tough start or a tough end, should I say, um, for a, you know, a great start. The team have worked tirelessly, um, and the, you know, the car was great early on, but we, uh, you know, we're struggling. But it, yeah, come bring on Bathurst. We'll see you, Bathurst. Thanks, mate. It's a good thing the Enduros, they can always piece it back together and have another crack in three weeks' time. Matthew Halliday in car number five on the restart. Resumes the race lead. Jamie Winkup in car triple eight. Nathan Pretty is in car 22 now. Rick Kelly in the seat of car one. Debris flag being shown there. Some, sometimes called the oil flag. Look at Wincup. He looked very quick through two, three, four. He's all over him at the end of the back straight and looking. Searching straight away to try and take the advantage off Halliday. This is Jamie's regular season car. I reckon there was contact there. It was. It's giving a little hurry up. You try and crisscross him down here. And he's impatient and sneaks on by. So he's gone by at turn nine. New leader. Push and shove. Wasted no time. Doing a good job. Just uh, middle into a dive through them. Good advice for Matthew Halliday. Just play it cool. He got a little tap on the backside down at turn eight. Win Cup was on a mission. Needs to stay in his own rhythm and just find out what the limits of the FPR car are in these new conditions. It's incredibly windy outside still. A belting northerly. Here it is again in replay down the inside. It started out to the extreme left hand side of the road from Jamie's viewpoint, then crisscrossed that back down the inside, got the job done. And he's got a monster margin heading up the back straight. Tol HSV did the stop. Of course, Rick Kelly jumped in. Paul Radis, it's great to see you back in a motor race. What a terrific effort. Oh, look, brilliant. Um, Tol Cars is performing well, and I get him more and more into the rhythm of driving it. Took a little while to get behind me, get past Murph and uh, a few of those guys, but uh, just sort of eased my way into it. I tell you, I haven't enjoyed a, a motor race for a long time like that. Look, how's the ankle? I asked you earlier on in the weekend, and you said, I'm just glad we don't have a Le Mans-style start because we'd be buggered. Oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely, definitely can't run. But, um, look, it, I get by. It's not too much. It's pretty good in the car. It's only when I get out I look like I'm hobbling a bit. But um, all in all, I'm good. Fitness is fine. And, um, you know, just looking forward to going back to Bathurst and uh, trying to have a good crack at that. You're done for the day here? Look, I'll, I'll keep ready just in case. But I think Rickster's, um, he's well capable of carrying on for the rest of the day. Thanks, Paul. Yes. Interesting to look at lap times. Last lap for Jamie Wincup was a 12.5. Lowndes best lap on lap four was a 12-4, so Wincup's got straight on it. Here's a pretty good battle going on. Car 51 of Jason Richards. And that car is fifth. Greg Murphy did a really good job. So what have we got? Wincup leading. Halliday is second. In terms of race order, the Holden Racing Team car number 22 of Nathan Pretty is third. Where do they go? New fastest lap of the race, Jamie Wincup, a 112.2. Two second margin over Matt Halliday. On our PitSmart software, a lot of the race yet to unfold as Bright rejoins. 
it's showing that that strategic move as we look now at the wow car just off the road on the edge of turn one strategically they're down the order a little because they came in so early in car number five on lap 47 i'll have to put more fuel that's in later that's correct Let them through. and uh, our software suggests that uh, on corrected time at the moment number five car is actually back in fifth place Correction, seventh place. As a Max Wilson had a handful. A wild, wild ride in the wow car, which is brand new, showing the scars. Well, guys, while a lot of the drivers now put their feet up for a few minutes, uh, spare a thought for Todd Kelly. He was really extremely fatigued when he got out of the uh, Holden Racing Team car. He couldn't stand up. They virtually just shuffled him into the back of the truck. He got in the back of the truck. There's a doctor waiting there. He is currently on a drip and trying to regain fluid, regain energy, so that he can get in after they pass that 100 lap marker and, and hopefully finish this race. Well, Brent, it's not all over for that team. It's been a torrid week with Todd being sick, Mark Scaife falling in. And I know you're watching Scaife, so we hope you get well soon. But Matty Crawford, the engineer of Car 22, may indeed might need that doctor to go with him. He's waiting on standby. His wife is due to give birth to their second child today. If he gets the call in his pocket, he needs to go pronto. It's all happening there, isn't it? This is Garth Tanda. He is seventh on the road. Track position's his worry at the moment, Matt. He's got a little bit of pace, but um, he's got to negotiate cars in order to get in touch with the key runners, chiefly Wincup, who's showing huge pace at the moment. On the second sector split on this lap alone, Wincup's made half a second on Halliday. Looking at the back of Lee Holdsworth, Holden Commodore here at turn nine. It's well documented what happened here. Tander and Scaife in 2006. The experiment went horribly wrong. Garth comes back to Sandown, the championship leader. Ten race victories, two overall round victories, and a pole position so far in the bag for 2007. He's fighting off turn to the championship his teammate Rick Kelly and Andrew Jones in car number 12 the team BOC entry has been shown the black flag for pit lane drive through penalty for not observing the blue flag little bit of a problem for Lee Holdsworth in that Valvoline Commodore, guys. Keep an eye on it. Spoke to Dean Canto just before. He had a clash with Luke Yordan. Little bit of steering damage, which, which is making things difficult, particularly up over the top at Turn 6. Keep an eye on that in car 33. And Andrew Jones in the number 12 car is at the head of this pack. There he is. He just went out of shot. So he's the one that they feel is holding up Nathan Pretty at the moment. So they're going to give him a tour through the pit lane. And the time, the time loss for a pit lane drive through is about 36 seconds. Take a look at this, a single replay of Rick Kelly at the exit of turn one. Yeah, exit understeer, didn't get the nose of the car planted and it went to the wrong side of the kerb. I've seen some damage under the bodies of cars this weekend as a result of doing that. And uh, James Courtney's done very fast sector splits down in 12th at the moment as well. Keep an eye on him, look at this. Patience. The OC car in front has a drive-through. There you go. Now they know that the car in front will be effectively released from their view. Penalty for Andrew Jones. So Nathan Pretty and Rick Kelly, who are mates, involved in a pretty good battle behind them. Jason Richards, Lee Holdsworth, as Aaron told us. Car 33 has got a few problems, reported by Dean Canto, who did the first stint. Jamie Winkup is the race leader. Matthew Halliday, Ford Performance Racing car number five is second. That car is third. Stay calm, mate. Stay I... calm. Focus on the exit, mate. Focus on the exit. Be smooth on the throttle. This is the Team Kiwi car. John McIntyre behind the wheel. I'm a bit um, mystified about the Andrew Jones black flag because he's nowhere near these guys, but maybe at some point he must have been tangling them up, but he's not showing any lack of pace with them there at the moment. Yeah. He's well clear of them, but they've got a standing black flag for him, so 
They're going to make him drive through the pit lane whether they like it or not. Well, the Murphy's Law, isn't it? Just what they called it. He's started to pull away and get out of their way. That's uh, Stephen Richards in car number six. He's caught in between Garth Tander and Jason Parkwana. And further to that, Nathan Pretty was complaining about the number 12 car to the team. The team lodged the complaint with race control and race control acted with a black flag. And yet earlier in the race, when Matt, uh, when um, Mark Winterbottom was complaining about Max Wilson in a similar scenario, nothing happened. And as per the warning, Lee Holdsworth gets swamped by Garth Tander. So Tander gets that position. Now Holdsworth has to fight off Stephen Richards. He puts a big fend on him. They both give each other space. And Andrew Jones is now in the pit lane. So Holdsworth will drop from sixth down to eighth. Tander goes up to position six. Richards into seventh. We're on lap 71 of 161. There's the WPS car. And a lot of our viewers here in Australia wanting to know when Grant Denyer's going to have a bolt in there. Jason Barkwater is doing a double stint. That was looking like it was a bit of a marginal move there for a moment for Richard Lyons, but fortunately the 55 car with Delberto driving gave him space and a move. This was done. the move on Garth Tander from against Lee Holdsworth, and that'll also open up the view that uh, Stephen Richards then had. Watch this. Gives him a little shove here on the, just on the right. Get back. There's the curb. When he left off the curb, he just bounced off his door a bit. Another sector split for James Courtney that looks very flash. Fastest of the race so far to the second sector. One of the interesting things to observe in all of this is that the number one car of Kelly Radisich pitted quite late relative to some of the others around them. And so in net terms, they've got to put less fuel in the car later in the race. And uh, on our PitSmart software, their corrected position will in fact be second as the race plays out and things stay as they are. Nathan Pretty's doing a good job here. This uh, group are really starting to bunch up here. Courtney continues to be the fastest car on the racetrack at the moment. He's in 11th and charging. We don't want to battle with these guys, mate. We don't want to battle. You can't stay in front. Let him go. Okay. So Matthew Crawford saying to Nathan, well, you heard it. There's some wise counselling. Knowing that there's still more than 80 laps to go. Jason Richards is complaining of brake fade. Harp on here for Nathan because uh, he's running well, he's showing speed, he doesn't want to yield unless he absolutely has to. It's a long way to go to the end of the race before anyone starts thinking championship. And Frankly, if I were him, they could make their own arrangements. I wouldn't be getting out of anybody's way. Stephen Richards and Lee Holdsworth, all in that pack. Five cars bunched together. Matt 
Mark Halliday and Jamie Wincup are in front of them. Check it out for all your V8 Supercar news live and on demand. Nathan has been in the seesaw with Rick Kelly. He's been showing great pace. And he was asked not to get too tangled up in the battle. And then uh, the front of Rick's car is beginning to show some temperature being tucked in the back. And he sort of went to the inside of him going down to turn one. And uh, Nathan didn't really fight and let him go by. And now, Pretty finds himself the wall of cars in the battle. Here it is again. Rick jumps out to get some cool air in the front of the car on instruction from Eric Pender, but it turns into a passing manoeuvre along the way. And now it's Jason Richards, who's been complaining a little of brake fade, who's behind Nathan Pretty, Garth Tander waiting and watching. Then it's Stephen Richards. You can see the Castrol Ford Performance Racing entry there, followed by Holdsworth, Barguana then in 10, Ingle, and then Courtney in the background. And I can tell you that car number 17 of Stephen Johnson has rejoined down there in 31st position, well and truly out of the race, but he came back on and posted the fastest time, 1.12.08.06. Courtney's on fire. He's been showing great pace, but now he had fresh air for quite a while. Now he's on the back of his teammate, uh, who in turn has got his hands full. Remember that Max is a lap down. They sneak by. Congratulations to James and wife Karis who are expecting their first child. Around about the time that James will be starting to get his race face on for the Clipsal 500 in 2008. In front of him, Russell Ingle. Win Cup's lead, 7.1 seconds over Matt Halliday. Triple A car now comes up behind the traffic of John McIntyre and the Team Kiwi. 0 21 car. Uh, Rick Kelly is doing a 12 9. He's obviously uh, 11 seconds behind the button. Wind Cup encouraging the team to do something about getting a blue flag for the preceding traffic. <laughs> Tough call in race control when you decide to show the flags and when you don't. Tasman Motorsport, you talked about a brake problem with the Murphy Richards car, Jason behind the wheel at the moment. They're struggling with rear tyres in the car in the first stint, which has been a, a common problem for Tasman all year. Basically, they made a roll centre adjustment and a pressure adjustment. Down at Jim Beam Racing, the 17 cars back out there. I spoke to Adrian Burgess, sporting director for that team. The offending part, he wouldn't say what it was, it's in behind the engine, so they couldn't actually get to it. The intention is for Stephen to do a few more laps, bring it into the garage and park it and go to Bathurst. Matthew said before, though, great speed from the car, but when they're that far out of the game, no points on offer, you're really just tearing the machine up. Matthew Halliday done the A1 Grand Prix for Team New Zealand. Uh, this year he spent a bit of time at the helm of a champ car for Conquest Racing. Unfortunately, he didn't have the budget to run for the whole year. Had a bit of a pause from racing in the last few months. We've seen him in Carrera Cup spent quite a bit of time racing in the US and he looks well settled in the groove here in this car at the moment. Second behind Wind Cup and in front of Rick Kelly. Speaking of second, that's where Rick ended up with his brother last year here at Sandown and at Bathurst. And these guys in car one are pretty well positioned at the moment because they didn't stop until lap number 60. They did their compulsory pad stop at that time and because they extended their first window, they ultimately end up with a shorter stop for fuel in the last instance. And so, on corrected terms, they look pretty good at the moment. 
Well, guys, our old mate Grant Denyer is just limbered up and raring to go to get in that WPS car, mate. Do you know how soon you'll be in? Uh, lap 107, I think. Jason's doing a double stint from the start uh, towards the last third, so I get to do the glory stint. The least amount of work and the most amount of glory. And look, he's doing a great job. Position 9 when we qualified 22. It's a great recovery. What's it like for you, mate? Do you feel a little nervous before you get in, or are you OK? Uh, Close to vomit, pretty much, is the way to, to describe it. Look, I only, I've only done one of these before. Last year, I was just pacing back and forward and bumping into walls. So now I'm a little bit more relaxed. And you can actually calculate a bit more what you need to do to, to, to win this thing, or at least to move further forward. So, look, the car's good under bugs. Great feedback. Uh, his fan inside the car's not working, so he's enormously hot. And he's a little overgassed with all the fumes uh, being in a pack of cars. So, you know, it's just going to be a hot, hot afternoon. Right, we'll get out there and enjoy it. We know you've got great footwork. All the best. It's just nice to be the tallest driver in a race team for a change, mate. At five foot five, I've never won a height contest before. <laughs> I have in this team. You've only done it by about two centimetres, though. Good luck to you, Grant, when you get in there. Happy birthday for last week, too, mate. Grant finished top ten with Alex Davison at Bathurst in 06 and finished 14th here. We'll see him in action shortly. Rick Kelly chipping away, chipping away against Matt Halliday. Has a peek up the inside just to let him know he's there. He's making big chunks, so it's just a matter of time here. Turn two. And the lead now for Jamie Wincup is 11.4 seconds. He's at the other end of the straight. It's, it's a back straight. A little bit early to get too carried away, but the radar my commentary area here doesn't look too flash to the west, which is kind of what we expected. We knew it was brewing, so weather could be a factor later in the day. Doesn't look too bad overhead at the moment. a little bit earlier there. Might try and crisscross down the inside here for nine. No, not quite close enough. Two race wins for the season for Rick. We've had 23 races coming into this one over 2007. Great effort, mate. Great effort. Have a drink. He's been in the points for 22 of those. Last couple of rounds, though, haven't been so fruitful for Toll HSV and Rick Kelly. Ninth overall at Queensland at Oran Park. This is a crucial one in terms of the championship. They're both doing a good job. Rick in third, Garth Tander in car 16 is in sixth. didn't go the way it should have. Bit of debris on the racetrack here. And uh, it looks like just cardboard. Oh, no, actually, it might be more substantial than that. Whatever it was. Yeah, it could be a little bit of the under tray off one of the cars. But uh, no, no damage done to these cars. It just flew out from behind. It's perfect. He sort of hoovered it up and spat it out the other way. So it's the Orcon oh. Falcon, and now we've got an off. That'll That's be Richards. one of the Tasman Motorsport. Yes, it is Jason Richards, who was fifth. And the question is why. He was complaining of some issues in that car. There was a bit of a rear um, grip issue, and also and black flag, black flag for car number eight. Sorry, I've interrupted myself there, but Max Wilson is getting a mechanical black flag. They've got an issue with that car bodywork hanging off it. Yeah, and Jason Richards has been talking about a brake issue with that car, so that could have played a role in this. You might be wondering why James Courtney's a bit further back in the pack, position 10 at the moment. The Geldwin car had a right front pad stuck during its pit stop when David Bernard stepped out. The pit stop time was 1 minute and 12 seconds, so James has got a lot of work to do, and uh, no reports if Beretta was involved in that either for Dancing with the Stars. Tasman problem is brakes, boys. He's been complaining of the brakes, mate. I've been uh, talking with Wally Story. 
the engineer Steve Henderson at the moment. What they were thinking of doing, they're now probably going to bring him earlier. They're going to pull out some blanking that they've got in the front bar. They're also looking at when they do their pad stop a little later, around 114, lap 115, to actually put in a better grade pad. It's a traffic problem at the moment, but they've got too hot, these fired off. So I'm assuming it's uh, we're talking about front pads. I looked at that car before the race and I said to Greg Murphy, you're going to run the blanking on the front of it. They've got, they've got half the front brake duct blanked off on that car because they felt their cooling efficiency was so good, but maybe it was a bit aggressive. Here's a driver change for Max Wilson, the wow. Entry, Michael Caruso will now go in. Guys, when the car drops, we're going to have to push it back because he's missed the fuel stop. We're going to have to push it back, OK? I wouldn't be at all surprised if... Uh... Wait, wait, Michael. Got a good bike pedal, mate? Good bike pedal? Just wait, mate. Fuel goes in at four wait. litres a second. Wouldn't be at all surprised if Tasman opened up that front brake duct area on the car. Wait, mate. Wait. 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 Poor old Michael Caruso. Go, 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 go. He's had an extended wait to get his first V8 start here at Sandown. So he's in the wow entry. Max Wilson is out. Good battle continues here between Halliday and Kelly. Just confirming again, Neil, yes, they will remove that blanking to get more air into the brakes. Yeah, I thought so. I was really surprised when I saw it earlier today, Dan, like to go into an endurance race with that amount of blanking on it for a qualifying maybe, and maybe for a very short race. But Rick, meantime, is now starting to put a move together. Can he stretch it up the inside? No, but very close to getting it done. Jamie Winkup has a 14.3 second lead. Oh, little touch, tiny little touch there. You notice how everybody's a lot more cautious when it comes to damaging the cars when there's a long race at stake. If it was a 100k sprint, it'd be game on. Paint flying everywhere. Settle themselves down as the Shannon's fly can takes us back up. Brock Strait, named in honour of a man who won here nine times. Nathan Pretty. Now, does Kelly okay, have man, another have a think crack about at your this? Brake balance. You may be able to go a little further forward. I'll leave that up to you. Trying to do it from a different angle this time with Kelly, but he's not quite close enough. Meantime, Halliday doing brake bias adjustments in the cockpit. seconds is the margin that Jamie Wincup's got over Matthew Halliday. Brad Jones with a herniated disc in his back, not contesting the Sandown 500. Hopes to be fit for Bathurst. And he pushed and shoved so hard that he dropped the spot. And cooked the rear tyres in the process. Russell will be giggling. Be a considerable change to that order of this little battle pack when they come around. It'll also give us an indication as if Jamie Winkup has pulled further away. I can tell you it's still a 16 and a half second gap back to Halliday, then Kelly, then Pretty, Stephen Richards, then Holdsworth, Jason Richards, Barguana, Tanda now in ninth. And the other thing not helping the cause for the 51 car is being under the back of other cars with the exit air from the preceding car being so hot. It's a very good effort from WPS. They're in good shape.
trouble here. They're all starting to get impatient. And Stephen Richards tried to put a move on Nathan Pretty at turn 10. To avoid heavy contact, he had to whack it up on the curb. Now it's on. Holdsworth just sat back. One deep, one wide. Holler Halliday has gone off. Second position has gone off. And Rick Kelly goes scooting through. Jason Richards in car 51 went after him. The net result is that Rick Kelly goes up to second position and Halliday drops back. This is a real pressure pack. It's been brewing here for a while, all this. And we had issues before we went to the break for Jason Richards, who now has a look up the inside. Watch this in replay and you'll see what happened here. And he gets out in the grey where there's no grip, surfs the edge of the sand pit, gets back on, fortunately, probably with no damage done, but picked up a little gravel in the radiator intake. And that's Jason Richards off as well. Prior to that, it turns nine at 10, Stevie Richards had had a bit of a moment with Nathan Pretty as well, tried to put a move on him, got up on the curb. Here's the other angle. All that gravel that just went into the radiator and into the front brake ducts is not good news. It'll feed through the hubs, out through the brake road and Mark Winterbottom. Can't, can't believe it. From pole position, he now finds his car sitting in 11th. Ah, another move. Oh, and more contact. Nathan Pretty is being swamped, muscled, pushed, shoved. James Courtney was in on it. Russell Ingle. Stay calm, stay calm, take a few deep breaths, mate. We just want to stay out of trouble here. We just want to stay out of trouble. Well, he certainly can't. Look at the two SBR cars. And they've been into it too. They've swapped spots a couple of times. Two laps ago, James Courtney got tangled up with Garth Tander coming onto the back straight, pushed him off turn four, was sideways. Russell Ingle came back up the inside of Courtney. And it's been brewing, like I said, in this group. Meantime, if you're Jamie Wincup, you just giggle because you've got a 17.8 second margin over them while they tear each other apart. Rick Kelly in second position. While FPR had Great one job, disaster Jamie. with it's car five, it it's been a good result for the other car, car six. And Stephen Richards is third, Lee Holdsworth is fourth. Tander, this is the impact that you'll see off Tander and Pretty. But by this stage, Nathan Pretty is being whacked by everybody. I reckon there might have been a bit of oil or something up there at uh, 234. When there's that level of chaos, and I've heard a couple of drivers just mention the issues on the radio, that there might have been debris on the road, it just scrambled the pack. How's the drive from Jason Barguana doing double duty? So he's done 89 completed laps. He started 21st and he's now up to 6th can't do more than 107. They stopped on lap 61, so their economy was pretty good. They ran a long way on their tank of fuel. There it is, WPS car number Courtney's 10. got him down the inside, and I think Ingle might have a piece of this as well. Well, you saw it earlier, the disappointment on Mark Winterbottom's face. Uh, just frustrated with that driver error, unfortunately, for Matt Halliday. Uh, Winterbottom hoping to get back in that car as soon as he can. Garth Tander has his hands full at the moment, too. He's reporting the car feels very slippery. He's not getting the grip that he needs. I don't know whether Russell Ingle will be frustrated, smiling, giggling or what when he hops out of the car. He's got a seat insert in there. When he pulls it out, he'll see a specially signed message that says, good luck, you'll need it. It's signed by none other than Craig Lowndes. And a problem for Courtney, he pinched the brake at the apex of turn one, lost a couple of valuable metres there. Marguana sees it, wants to take the opportunity. For the last five or six laps, this battle group has chopped and changed. And we can expect to see Jason Richards in, in about 15 laps. He continues to be frustrated by the brakes on the car and we'll keep a close eye on what they do at the front of them. Through they go. Now through turn six, seven and eight. Oh, and James is continuing to find that flat spot on the tyre. Often when you put a mark on a tyre, it always returns to that point again when you can least afford it. The unweighted front wheel down there at turn eight with the car turning left. The left front comes up off the ground light. Grant's got the help on. Focus, mate. Look forward, mate. Look forward. That's what it's all about, focusing. Barguana. And that encouragement for James Courtney. 
Larks had Craig Baird as a partner in 2006, and he was top 10 in both the Enduros. Of course, he's a former winner at Bathurst in 2000. And this man, James Courtney, David Bernard had an entirely different situation in the opening stanza. He took the first stint, dropped back to fourth, and literally did his entire stint without any pressure from front or back. Courtney steps into the car. He's in sixth at the moment. And he has really got some pressure. a replay down around turns two and three oh, <laughs> right up on the ripple strip just spoke to, just spoke to david bernard at stone brothers race and he's reporting that there's indeed a flat spot on one of james's front tires so he's going to have to live with that for the rest of this stint judging by the pace at the moment it's not worrying james too much these guys have known each other for some 20 years grew up racing carts in sydney a real test of a friendship, wouldn't it? To go through a weekend like this, but both have delivered under different but trying circumstances. Just shows you the difference. These two cars are not challenging Jamie, Jamie Wincup for position. Rick Kelly has just uh, crossed the control line, so 16.89 seconds is the difference between first and second. There's Stephen Richards. Always have to count him into your calculations, especially in the Enduros. Lee Holdsworth, fourth. James Courtney, Russell Ingle, Jason Barguana. And Nathan Pretty, Jason Richards. It's the double eight car, they've been solid. Richard Lyons and Alan Simonson. Lyons behind the wheel. Look at this. Stephen Ellery now. Well, I was going to say has the wheel of car 67, but would you still call it a car? The state it's in. Here's Garth Tander. We're on board with car 16, who's holding down top five. Race leader is on his 95th lap. And what does all this tell me? It tells me that when you put your two best drivers together in a good car, that's a pretty flash combination and that's what Triple Eight have done. They've got a 17 second lead or near enough to it over everybody else. And if you harshly analyze what's gone on with almost everybody else, it's because the drivers with fewer kilometers have been put in an enormous pressure situation things have occurred as a result of it. The race is a long way from over yet, but uh, for the first half of the race, it's played beautifully to the strategy for Triple Eight. Just have a bit of a ride with Garth Tander.
feels the bad luck of 2007. The state of play is this. Jamie Wynn Cup in car 888 is the race leader by 16.9 seconds over Rick Kelly. Stephen Richards is third. Lee Holdsworth is th uh, fourth in car number 33. Then it's Garth Tander, Russell Ingle, James Courtney, Jason Bargwan, and Nathan Pretty. And Jason Richards make up our top 10. And here's a problem on a Zinger replay for the Gelbwin Motorsport car number four of James Courtney. Remember, he was in seventh. He's locked, locked that front left again, and we've seen it a few times, and that'll probably almost certainly have a mark on that tyre now. And uh, he dropped a spot again to Russell. They've been seesawing. David Bernard preparing. In case he's required to get back in that car, whether they double stint James and wife Christy and Todd Kelly. He's all recharged, ready for another shot. Nathan's down in ninth at the moment. Let's have a look at where they all sit. This is second place, Rick Kelly. Third place, Stephen Richards. Then next in the queue is Lee Holdsworth. Garth Tander, Russell Ingle. James Courtney is seventh. Jay Jason Barguana, then Nathan Pretty, and more problems. He's, gonna, he's ultimately going to have to solve that issue or drive slower, James Courtney, or it's going to continue to lock on him. He's been keeping a watchful eye on the brake problem with the Tasman car of Jason Richards and Greg Murphy. They've now actually relayed that Jason has pins and needles in his leg. Boys, he can't actually feel the pedal the way he wants. That's the fade in the brakes. Guys, the situation with the weather's not looking too brilliant. The dark clouds are just starting to roll in. Uh, we mentioned earlier on that uh, the boys from Toll had a helicopter on standby. They have just dispatched that to chase the rain, so they know exactly when it's going to arrive. Chase it or chase it away. <laughs> have to be a big chopper with the weather we can get here. That can close in on Sandown. There it is. Yeah, I mentioned it before. You could see it in the on the radar sweep in the west. But we've played this game here before. It's certainly building out around Colac, Ballarat, up towards Bendigo and even further west to the Grampian Mountains at the moment. It's a little way off, but it's got that feel. Jason Barguana in eighth. A little more front locking for Barguana's seen it time and time again. Now gives him a little nudge to say, I'm here. Uh, and it's go gone flat. flat, it's gone flat. There you go. And in the end, Barguana ended up having to go off-road as well. So that Good brings... Job, guys. Good, the car, Good job, mate. That brings Nathan Pretty and Jason Richards back into the picture inside the top ten. Yeah, I know, mate. I just want to... He's going to have to watch the pace here. He's driving it pretty quick on a flat tyre. He'll end up with more damage and that'll delay them even longer. Look what it's doing. Look at his, look at his hand when you see it coming to shot. Look at his left hand. That would be slowed down, not so bad. Rattling and rattling. Making a hell of a noise. Right, Dave, what's going on? Tell me. James, you haven't done enough laps, so you need to stay in. But if you can't go on, that's your choice. getting contact on the way back as well, Barguana, and had to cut the corner there to jump back on. Nathan Pretty went off in sympathy behind them. So here we go. Gel Wynn Motorsport car comes in. Has to bring it back down to 40. Ready if you need him, but just please let us know. Don't get enough left to left, have I done enough left or not? No, mate, you haven't done enough left, so no. There's your answer. Keep going, don't it? Pretty easy. Stay in. off the rev limiter inside the helmet. That deathly silence. Knowing right now... Just get all down, James. This. You'll be OK. Ross Stone. I'm going to make up a deal. That's one place that James Courtney didn't want to be. Now it's up to him. That's his cool down and get going again. 
Todd Kelly, what have you got left in this body for this last stint? No, I'll be fine. I uh, had a little bit of a rebuild in the trailer there uh, after the first stint, and uh, I'll be fine to get back in. We're just waiting to see what this weather's going to do. We're thinking of coming in, but uh, if the rain's not too far away, we might just stay out for a few laps. Nathan's dropped up back a few spots. Can you, can you claw those back? Well, I think so. I mean, the car's good. Um, there's a fair few laps to do between when I get in and the end of the race, so hopefully if I can bring it home, I'll get a few of those spots back. All the best. Thank you. As James Courtney came out onto the racetrack and uh, rejoined, he locked the brakes again going into turn one. Now, they had a brake problem with this car on Friday. I wonder whether or not the drama that they've got relates in some way to that problem. He locked both fronts going down there. Of course, they're cold tyres, and that could be part of the issue. But uh, he really let off a smoke signal down there. Watch this. Jay Burtnick in car three and a big puff. That was both front tyres on James' car. And that's a big lockup on brand new tyres. Wincup leads it by 15.8 seconds. Rick Kelly is second. Stephen Richards is third. Sandown 500. It's just a rock-solid performance from the Team Vodafone Triple Eight car and indeed the Double Eight entry as well with our two international drivers or two of our international drivers, Richard Lyons and Alan Simonson. Lyons doing the share of the deal here. They're 12th. And Lyons and Wing Cup holding a steady, steady, solid lead. At the next stop for Garth Tander, they're going to do a rear roll centre change and change the tyre pressures on the incoming tyre set. Had nice, clear conditions almost from the start of this race. They all know it's going to change. Car number two of Tony Longhurst. We saw Glenn Seaton do his stint. And now Tony, who got the call up on Friday to come down from the Gold Coast, jumps in and punches out these laps. Glenn Seaton did 52 laps. We've done 104, so it's Half each. I reckon Tony will be feeling it by now too. Pretty fit bloke, he's 49 years of age, but he hasn't had a drive since Bathurst. This is Garth Tander who, once again, sees the rear of the Gary Rogers Motorsport car 33 of Lee Holdsworth. Jay Verdnick. In the other Tasman Motorsport entry, and there is Nathan Pretty. Expect that car in this lap. And Todd Kelly will leap in. to Todd Kelly. Struggled to get out of his belt then. And 
this is something of an Iron Man performance from Todd. See, they've got the elastics on the straps to try and hold the belts out of the way so you don't sit on them when you come in. Some teams use a driver assistant. That's the radio being connected. The fuel's the limiting factor. She was an extra long stop too, boys. They had problems getting the fuel coupling in there for uh, at least five to 10 seconds. It added to it 23 seconds in the end, so about 90 litres of fuel going on. All right, now Nathan Pretty was down in ninth position. When, in now, pal. In now. when he came on in. So now it's up to time to settle down. Start pushing away. And here's car 10. Jason Barguana has just done an extraordinarily good job. He's gone right to the limit. And now Grant Denyer is in car 10. And they're up inside the top 10. Thereabouts at this change. Park said this morning that uh, that car had more pace in it than they ended up being able to show in qualifying. Here's the compulsory pad stop for FPR. Remember, they did a stop earlier for, for pads, but it didn't fit inside the CPS window. But that was part of their strategy. They wanted fresh pads. Winner the bottom in, and away he goes. Got a bit of work to do. Jamie Winkup is our race leader. Rick Kelly is second. Stephen Richards is third. Mark Winterbottom gets back into the car. Matthew Halliday was doing a really good job. Found himself off the track at the exit of turn one. Intercepted a message before from Garth Tander as well, and he's asked for a rear roll centre adjustment in the Toll HSV car. He's also asked for the boys to knock a bit of air out of the incoming tyre set for the rears. Looking at the rear end of the car, again, thanks to Harrop Engineering, these CAD drawings, we'll have a look at the back of a V8 supercar, and you can see that big triangular section, that bracket, is the Watts Link housing. When they make a rear roll centre adjuster, they're moving a slider down, up and down in that slot, thanks to this threaded rod that we're highlighting here on the graphic and there's a winder, an adjuster in the window of the car, it's attached to a cable that rod, it's a thread and it moves a slider up and down and there's the Watts linkage, we're looking there at the actual linkage itself and there's a bolt through the centre of it and I know that those of you that follow our coverage have probably seen cars at times with their rears dragging and smoke pouring off the back, it's that bolt that breaks and the back of the car collapses so they're going to adjust it in Garth's car to try and settle down the behaviour of the vehicle. Car 16, Garth Tander, the Toll HSV car. There will be no driver change here. Craig Baird did the first stint, did it well. Tander sits and waits. Interesting, he's been following around Lee Holdsworth on the track. At our last round at Oran Park, it's exactly what happened in race three. Oh, go, 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 go. You just know by the tone of the picture on your screen there, it's got a little darker, got a little murkier. A few more clouds hovering about. Guys, this is James Courtney's puncture from earlier on. As you can see, he's flat spotted it around here, and this shows you the different layers on the tyre. About four millimetres of rubber on top there, and he's gone right through the lot of it. This tyre, by the way, was running at between 70 and 80 degrees Celsius, so running pretty warm. Now, James went out there, looked like he had some brake problems. Ross Stone tells me it's not an issue at all with the brakes. It's just him being on cold tyres and a little bit frustrated and a little bit anxious out there. When they go, they go. It's like a shark attack. He... he uh... He arrived down there and I think probably asked too much of those front tyres. He got on the radio and said, I've got a brake problem, but then we didn't see any evidence, evidence of it after that. So, Vodafone car in. So there's the Tasman Motorsport car. Uh, we, can we see whether the blank, yes, they're pulling the blanking out of the front of it now. And uh, so they're plucking it off. Yeah, see those little flaps they just took out? They were zippy tied into the brake duct and they effectively covered half of the brake 
intake area. Sure they pull the plugs out of the front. Pull the plugs out of the front. And Wally, they've already done it. The plugs are out. Pump the pedal up, mate. Pump the pedal up. Richard Lyons and Alan Simonson. Hold for kill. Hold So this is the voice Hold. of Wally's story Hold. before. This is Kevin Hold. May Hold. speaking. Clear away, guys. What's the thing? of Garth Tander, the rear roll centre adjust adjustment was up half a turn, so he's looking for more turn in the front of the car, a bit more support in the rear, stiffens up the rear of the car. There was a driver change there in car double eight, Alan Simonson's back in after Lyons did the job, car 51, Jason Richards still on the timing monitor, we'll double check that. I saw both drivers hovering around there. Triple Eight getting ready, boys. Craig Lowndes about to hop back in the car. Jamie Wincup will step out in moments. Busy scene. Down there you see the awkward angle sometimes and the cars end up being parked at. Fly cam tracks the car out. 40 k's until this control line come out and then they run down the ramp. There's the line. Once you cross that, flick the switch on the steering wheel. Away you go. Wind Cup still in command. 14 second margin from Rick Kelly. Stephen Richards still very nicely placed. And so is Russell Ingle. The lead car of Wind Cup last pitted on lap 56. He's currently on lap 112. Richards in. Brake dust from the wheel. Here comes their compulsory stop. Calipers being used to squeeze back the pistons. Dual point coupling there for the fuel. It both refills at four litres a second and it vents a little problem on the right front. He had a problem go, go, straight go, away. Go, 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 go. Right front put his hand up straight away. I had a problem. Stephen Richards goes back out. Double stinting. Yep, I'll just confirm here that Greg Murphy is in car 51. He's jumped back in car 51. Jason Richards. There's car 39 of Fabian Coulthard and Chris Pither. And car three of Mark Noski and Jay Verdnick. He's pulled over on the side. Here we go. Lounge in. So they were waiting to see how the situation would unfold as to whether Lowndes would get back in. It's clear now, he has. Hold the fuel, hold the fuel. Hold. Spectre, heat hold. coming out of that. Hold, hold, clear. What do you think, please? Eyes wide open for our race leader. For, for we're under course yellow. full course yellow. Or some incident around the track that we're not just sure of yet. It'll be the stationary car, yeah, car, car three, three that we saw. In a dangerous position. You know, there it is. on the dash panel, the, the far left-hand side of the dash panel, there are two switches. Do you know those two switches? I do. Jay Verdnick in the car at the moment. Second of the Tasman entries. This is the second of the Siramay cars. Chris Pither leaping out. Car 50 of Cam McConville and David Reynolds. Cam's about to get back in. Cameron gets in for the next stint, and here comes Rick Kelly. He will stay in the car. Just really solid. No scurrying, no panic, no trouble. Where does he pop back out? Slots out behind car two. 
which is Tony Longhurst. Yeah, he's just got lap traffic in yep. between. Just wonder how many cars there are. There is what should be our race leader, Craig Lowndes. Remember, this, this evaporates that entire lead, which is uh, hovering around 15, 16, 17 seconds. Under safety car conditions here at the Sandown 500. Field is car 34 behind the WPS Chrysler safety car. Cameron McLean. How will this affect the strategies? Weather still yet to have its say. of our two winners from 2006. Mark Winterbottom is doing a lot better than his partner from last year, Jason Bright. Bright had a big off. Winterbottom out of the car when his teammate Halliday went off as well. So James Courtney comes in. He's going to do a changeover with David Bernard. they had earlier with the flat spotted tyre that eventually deflated gave way. Got me on the radio there, Bessie. Uh, Lance, clear, thank God. Alrighty, mate, we're still in the safety car conditions here. So Bernard back in the car. Ceramaze car 67. Our Kiwi viewers will be well versed with David Bernard over the last couple of years. Driving in the uh, New Zealand V8 series and having a really good time. Are you sure, right? Yeah, it's just my eyes are burning so bad. and shove involving the Autobahn entry and the Team Kiwi car. Craig Lowndes is back behind the wheel of car 888. Rick Kelly has stayed behind the wheel of car 1. So let's see how it all pans out. There's traffic in there. The situation will start to unfold as the laps start to get completed. Well, James Courtney, hard work out there. You had fumes in the cockpit. Yeah, it's, uh, we didn't have the best of stops and then when I was coming through there was a lot of bumping and stuff to get past and I think maybe something's happened with the airbox or something because 
just so many fumes in the cars, my eyes were watering and starting to go a little bit blurry, so we decided to switch over to David. So you put a fair bit of water in there now, are they feeling all right? No, they're, they're still burning, but we continue to put a bit more water in it. Well, you did a hard stint out there, you happy with it? Yeah, just the end, we made it, had a lock up and then the tyre blew. And, uh... All right, mate, stick at it. Thanks. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grant Denyer has got his hands full in the WPS car number 10. Car 2. Wow. Tony Longhurst uh, and Glenn Seat. Ex excuse me, Matthew. Big news here. Car 16 is going to get a pit lane uh, drive through penalty for an inoperative uh, pit lane uh, flashing lights in the rear of the car. Can't even spit it all out. Bottom line is Tanner's going to have to go through the pit lane for a penalty. That's amazing. First in the championship, fourth on the road. Garth Tanner's race. It's about to suffer an almighty blow. When the pit lane speed limit is activated, you're supposed to have the tail lights flashing on the car, the high intensity lights, and they weren't operating. So they either either wasn't switched on or the lights are faulty, but either way, it's a penalty. Mounds is our race leader. Rick Kelly is second. Mechanical black flag for car number 50 for fuel spilling from that car as well. At the Cam moment, Cam McConville in the car. Oh, look at Mark Winterbottom. 51 is Murphy back in there. We have really got a race on our hands. So that's Winterbottom in eighth position. You're looking back out. The FPR Orcon car. Murphy in ninth. Behind him is Todd Kelly. Greg Murphy and Jason Richards started ninth, worked their way up. Had some troubles when Jason was in the car. Now they're back, and there's some pretty heavy discussion going on. Obviously difficult to see behind the gear, but I suggest that's probably Rob Crawford has gone down to verify this call for the... What do you mean not having the rain light on? They're saying they didn't see the flasher working, so um, his lane speed limit are not working. They couldn't see it. News is reaching Garth Tander. Craig, that's got to be a hard one to take. Yeah, it does. Obviously, something's gone wrong with the with the pit lane light, so uh, it's a shame because after that safety car, we're in pretty good position in fourth. So, Garth worked pretty hard all day long. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty harsh that one. I just felt a few rain spots on my forehead there. We could be in for a changeable race here for the rest of this one. Yeah, well, I hope it does now. That first stint looked pretty hard there. There was a lot of full-time drivers out there. It was a tough one. What can you do for the rest of this? Yeah, it was pretty pretty tough starting. Like, it's been a year since I've raced one. So uh, the last the last half of the stint was really good, but I uh, just struggled a little bit at the beginning. But uh, we brought it back, handed it over, and uh, went back out in eighth. We'll see what Garth can do. All the best. Yeah, cheers, mate. Well, as usual with these races, all happening at once here. Rain, passing manoeuvres, controversy, issues, weather, and it's really brewing on the mountains to the west at the moment on the radar. It's come alive. There it is. Now, uh, the, now that, is he serving the penalty there? Was he actually driving through? Because there was... Yeah. yeah, OK, so they were live pictures, so there's certainly no indication that... Uh, those lights are flashing as they're supposed to. Normally the high end. It's a dark and gloomy mood for Garth Tander and Craig Baird and that half of the Toll HSV team. The other half, Rick Kelly's camp, Paul Radisic is his co-driver. They're making a new light. The other half's looking pretty good. They're behind Craig Lowndes. question from the rule book. Do you get a drive through when you've done a drive through and you haven't had your pit lane limited <laughs> light showing? That could go on forever. Oh, <laughs> Just stay in there. 
So Greg Murphy and Craig Lowndes find themselves paired together. Are they showing blue flags, mate? No, no, no. Fastest lap of the race has been done by we Todd will Kelly. Have it, mate. So Lowndes is starting to get grumpy about the fact that uh, he's battling away here with Greg Murphy. No, 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 the response. Blue flag means that you've got to give way to the competitor behind. Look at that western horizon. Looking towards the west and southwest there, it looks pretty gloomy. Murph trying to make sure he doesn't go a lap down. Great driving, great. Nice and smooth and clean, mate. Oh, oh, no. oh. Trouble for both of them, Lowndes and Murphy. They're forced to scoot along the grass to get back onto the track. It's all going to happen again. He's back well, in front of him. Unfortunately, they're not addressing it too well. Probably that, mate. We need to cool it down. We'll cool it down. We'll get it, mate. We've still got the lead. So that's, that's the most important thing, mate. There's still no blue flag. No blue flag. Wife, Natalie, looking on. Jamie Wincup. They're doing his homework. Craig Lowndes. Now finds himself behind. Well, they need to get Alan the ADM. Simonson. They, they need to get Alan Simonson out of the way. Look at the water, probably look at the rain hitting the windscreen. It's coming in. Uh, Craig must have um, gone in there a bit hot and couldn't pull it up and understeered into Greg. They both had to ease out of the steering lock and then just spear off the road. But at least they've pressed on. the answer to that question. He's blowing up, isn't he? Oh, he's, he wants up. to know who's in it. Whoa, look at Greg's car sliding. You see the Tasman car just sliding all the way through turn four there. It used to be a little bit more aggressive intervention with the blue flags. It's been the subject of a bit of paddock debate in recent past. But, um, there, are, there are two views, and of course it depends on which camps you're in at the time as to which case you argue. If you're leading or you've got the pace, you want everybody to be sh you know, shuffled out of the way. If you're trying to stay on the lead lap and you, you're doing competitive lap times and uh, you don't want to be forced to sidestep, here's the radar sweep. We're looking at the 256k loop around Melbourne and where all that heavy paint return is at the moment is about 100 kilometres west of Melbourne in and around the area of Ballarat extending south to Colac and uh, that's where the weather's coming from today. Originally the wind was blowing heavily from the north but it was forecast to swing to the west and that's where it's starting to come from now. Spin around for Lee Holdsworth in car 33. Quick mate, I can have that sort of... Jamie Wincup, it is starting to rain. <laughs> yeah, you're right. If uh, there wasn't enough action already, <laughs> it's going to spice up now with uh, yeah, rain falling in pit lane. It's uh, supposed to come. We're expecting it a lap 100. It's a little bit later, but uh, I'm predicting it'll be a wet finish to the race. It was all going on there with blue flags too. We had Roland get out of the post and run up the concrete. It was a little interesting down there. I'm not sure it's, um, it's tough because there's cars racing. Everyone's racing, uh, but there's lap cars and everything going on. So um, lucky enough, Craig got back on the track and we're still leading. Thanks, Jamie. Won't be long, boys, before they start the pit. It's starting to rain, all right. Well, you've, you've got to be very, very careful here. If you fire your shot too early, and here's the reason why Holdsworth went round. He was lucky he didn't get drilled by a couple of blokes. Yeah, and Russell was in there as well. And Team Kiwi team. Cup. If you jump too quickly with your weather call here, you can pay a price. I think, oh, Stephen Richards, probably unaware of the fact, is it Stephen? Yeah, it's Glenn Seaton. Stephen's in the car. car and Glenn Seaton's in car two. Yeah, unaware of the fact there was a car on the right there. And uh, slippery conditions mean everybody's testing their grip limits. And that's why. 
So we picked it up about here. That's Steve, when the uh, contact happened. Stephen would have been unaware of the fact that uh, Glenn was down the right-hand side then. We're looking at Mark Winterbottom and behind him Todd Kelly. They're eighth and ninth. Our race leader is Craig Louds. Rick Kelly is second. Stephen Richards is third. Then Ingle. And we've got Paul Wheel. Car number 20. Partnered with Paul Dumbrell. Holdsworth sixth. They'll, they'll try and stay as long as they can on these tyres. There's the wet standing by. Yeah, they were still just uh, up there. Just there's a light sprinkle, so just have to go, go easy on that. Just got to be careful you don't jump onto them too quick and then find yourself having to get back off them again. We've seen that before. Stone Brothers Racing guys, they're talking to Russell Ingle in the number nine car, Dave Stewart the race engineer with that car in consultation with Ross Stone and also Ken Douglas and Ken said if it goes to 1.16s or 1 minute 17s then they'll really start to think about wets, they're on standby. Everybody is. Just for clarity, everybody is fueled to the end now, no problem there, so it's purely about lap time as Aaron suggested then you're going to need to be very certain that you need to go on to and stay on wets. Oh, big lock up for the double eight car of Alan Simonson. I'm, I'm surprised that they've left the 88 car there in front of Craig. He's behind him. Okay. Yeah, got past him. Okay, right. He's still got that war going on with Greg Murphy. So that is our race leader, Craig Lowndes. He has a seven second gap. Come on, Dado. Rick Kelly. 7.2 seconds. Stephen Richards third. The Russell Ingle fourth. What about Wheel and Dumbrell car 20? Yeah, they just stay in close contact so they realise what a joke they are. Start at 25th, up to 5th. They're just going to be a bit careful that Craig doesn't um, pop a circuit breaker in his mind here because he is leading the motor race seven seconds up and if he gets too freaked out about it then, then something else could go wrong. Normally the way, isn't it? Frustration builds, builds, builds. And then something has got to give. Right now, Lowndes and Team Vodafone want Greg Murphy to give. What, and what Craig should be a bit careful of is that the uh, devil horns don't grow here. And um, he gives Murph a serve. And then the last thing he needs is a drive through. Shannon's fly cam takes us around. Let's keep our head, mate. Let's keep our head nice and smooth. We've still got a seven second lead, mate. Great work. Live counselling. He keeps that gap. It's exactly the same. John Bauer has the wipers on. So too does car 55. There is Rick Kelly. So he's second. Further up the road by 7.2 seconds. Some cars in front of him. And he's chasing down his lounge. Just spoke to Jeff Greg at Tasman Motorsport. I said, are you likely to tell Greg Murphy to move over? Probably shouldn't have asked the question. He said, nah, why? They're the enemy. WPS car, Grand Tenure. Lounds. He drags Murphy down. He shuts the door on him for good measure. So now he's in the clear. In the clear of Murphy, that is. You can still see other traffic in front of him. Gap seven seconds. Back to the Okay. He's desperate, desperate to make the point. 
point. Easy goal. there on the rear left and car 51 has been given a black flag for failing to respond immediately to the blue flag so Greg Murphy will get a drive through penalty I reckon there'll be a bit of discussion about blue flags after this race it always is Meanwhile, Rick Kelly has chopped in a little bit to that gap that he's got to hunt down for Lowndes. It's now down to 6.7 seconds. Winterbottom is in seventh. Make that eighth. Todd Kelly's now in seventh. He's driven well today, Todd, despite his condition. These are really difficult conditions now. Just, you know, you've lost the grip edge from underneath you. He's got to be very careful of curbs here. They get very slippery. Enough residual warmth in the slicks to keep a bit of confidence, but it's a new adventure every lap. You're never 100% sure what you've got when you get to every corner, and sometimes you put your foot on the brake pedal and determine that, uh-uh, you know, I'm a metre too late, now you're in strife. David Bernard's got uh, brake issues also with car number four, which is what James Courtney was talking about earlier as well. Great effort, mate. Great effort. 130 laps complete, 130 complete. It's 31 to go. You might have seen those green boxes earlier that we flashed up. Time difference between car one and car triple eight as Rick Kelly got a little bit too wide there. It's a funny one, isn't it? He's got a fair few cars in between him and car triple eight. Yet on the timing monitors, he's doing exactly what's needed. From Rick Kelly at Tom HSV. This car, there just doesn't seem to be any dramas going on at the moment. The same can't be said for car 10. The WPSK, you saw him come in. You might get an update from Daniel. Yeah, thanks, Matty. I, just, I actually just came to talk to Jason Barguana about a few things, and I said, look, your car's coming in wide. It's actually dropped a cylinder. I've just got Grant Daniel behind us here. I'll try and get a, a word with me, little dancing weatherman here. Grant, that's disappointing. What's the problem, mate? <laughs> it's... Uh... In the immortal words of Dick Johnson, mate, that engine wouldn't pull a drunken sailor off your sister. <laughs> she was nothing left but running on about oh, five or six oh, cylinders. She was way down, which is disappointing. Bugs just did a sterling job from 22nd. As soon as I jumped in, did a couple of quick laps and we could have held there and stayed there or if not moved forward and now nothing. Why this sport? Why? You continue to do it. Good luck at Bath. It's hard luck today. Thanks, mate. That is bad luck for the WPS team, especially given all the hard work, as Grant mentioned, that Barks did. did a terrific job. The other guys that have continued to play a clever game through the day, great strategic game and shuffled themselves up the order. Paul Wheel and uh, Paul Dumbrell in car number 20. They're fourth, and here they are coming onto the back straight. When they took their stops, they took their first stop on lap 61. They did. Uh, fuel and tyres and their second stop they did fuel tyres and pads on lap 113 and both those stops were done during the safety car periods and strategically they were able to jump people in both the stops and so that's the reason why they're up in fourth place at the moment between Stephen Richards and Lee Holdsworth not to mention some great driving and good car pace so well done. Yeah, the key to that, Neil, was that they stayed out for one extra lap behind the safety car. They didn't form up in the queue. They stayed around in one more lap. Paul Umbrell looking very confident. Paul Wheel behind the wheel. Of course, he drove at Queensland Raceway earlier in the year, but very much a non-full-timer these days. He's making his 100th championship start. Paul Wheel, so it looks as though it's going to be a good one to celebrate. They are top four. Lounge, 5.4 second lead. There is some big time pressure coming on the rear of Todd Kelly's car. Lights 
flash. <laughs> you could see something was going to go astray, and it did so for Todd Kelly. He was so aggressive there into turn one. And that puts him a lap down. So he had to take the opportunity while it was there, but it didn't work out. Gap's pretty interesting between Lowndes and Rick Kelly. Over the last uh, 10 or so, 15 laps perhaps, Rick Kelly's turned a seven and a half second deficit into a 4.8. first, Rick Kelly second, 4.6 seconds now. Stephen Richards third. Paul Wheel and Paul Dumbrell in car 20. Our fourth. Lee Holdsworth is fifth, Gartan is sixth. Mark Winterbottom seventh. Alan Simonson is eighth, Russell Ingle ninth and Todd Kelly now tenth. Steve Owen in car 55. Alex Davison in car 18. So they're 12th and 13th. I should point out also that John Bauer in car triple one started 28th, is now 11th. side action at the end of the back straight between the Tasman Motorsport car and the GRM car and now Tanda slots in in front of Greg Murphy. It wasn't so much a slot as a punt. I knew you'd have a different take on it. Oh no, there's not, not a different take, but just uh, he definitely gave him a little bit of help. Six laps to go. Oh dear. David Bernard in the car at the moment, car number four. Having real trouble pulling up there inside the Team Kiwi car. Six seconds clear of Rick Kelly. Stephen Richards third, Paul Wheel is fourth, Tanda fifth. We've mentioned earlier in the telecast that Toll HSV have employed a helicopter pilot to check on the weather for them. He's currently flying over Oakley at the moment and he says we may not get the rain at all. And as if Paul Morris didn't need any more bad luck, he's just copped another whack there. The team Cirame car. Stephen Ellery behind the wheel. On the Zinger replay. This was uh, Craig Lowndes putting the pressure on Todd Kelly, who's about to go a lap down. Gave him a flash of the lights. And up into turn one, Kelly cuts across, but then finds himself with nowhere to go, except on the grass and the dirt. So Todd is now in 10th position. 5.8 second lead now for Lowndes over Rick Kelly. Stephen Richards, Paul Wheel. An indication of the gaps here. 
Great John, map, Craig. Great map, mate. You John are Bow there. Just leaving turn four, and Bow has done a good job today. He's 11th. He started 28th. Him and Jonathan Webb. JB started. Webb did the middle sector. And now, John back in the car. mountain of experience 220 starts now in the championship all-time leader three-time winner here and two-time Bathurst champion and of course the series champion in 1995 and on top of all that there was doubt yesterday as to whether he'd drive at all after, uh, not hurting, for position repeat not for position the hurting his shoulder getting out of the car yeah, they were doing pit stop practice on Friday night tore a muscle, leaping in and out. And around we go. That's Alan Simonson. Todd Kelly behind him. Now, Steve Owen also in the picture. A good opportunity for us to have a ride with Garth Tander, who's fifth Paul Wheel is in front of him for position. position for a run. Sixth gear. And still a big commitment on the brake. Hoping and assuming that the grip levels are what he wants them to be when he gets over the top of the hill. He got past Paul Wheel, so that gives him position four. And you don't always find that the track is the same for all 3.1 kilometres in these conditions. You get more and less grip in different spots. It's just such a big gutsy ride right down the back mate. straight. Four, 22 seconds to Stephen Richards, so uh, we just need a safety car and just drive it home. It's a good effort, isn't it, of Garth Tanders? We were talking before about John Bow and climbing in and out of the car. It's quite a complex business these days because getting in and out of the car has been made more difficult by how small the gap is. This is all the bodywork stripped away from a V8 supercar. Our CAD drawings show you the complexity of the roll cage and that gap that you can see where you traditionally fit a driver's door is what the drivers have to arrow through and over the years that gap's got smaller and smaller and smaller as Richards puts a move on Bow, gets it done, that was a close one, there's the gap and you've got to be very careful how you slide in and out and some teams the gap's even tinier and the seats have moved 50 mil further to the left in some cases towards the middle of the car so the hole gets smaller, some of the drivers get bigger <laughs> and the seat's further away than it used to be. And as much as you'd like to say Take that thing out because it's uncomfortable getting in and out. That's the one thing that will protect you in a V8 supercar. What I'm not is they're just uncomfy things to be in, aren't they? Jonathan Webb, development series driver. <laughs> He's got how good's this? One step out of the top ten.
lead for Louds over Rick Kelly is 6.7 seconds. These are conditions where Lowndes has traditionally done quite well too. These varying conditions, a little bit of wet, dry. His rhythm's good. Mind you, Rick is running with him at the moment. In fact, if anything, he's taking... He wants to get the numbers. He's trying to work out what, what level to push his car because the conditions are a bit dangerous. You guys are alternating. One lap, your two tenths up. One lap, he's two tenths up. Pretty even, mate. I'll tell you exactly that. Okay. That lap was 112.98 for Craig. Rick Kelly just did a 113.1. It's interesting, isn't it? We saw this last year that you, know, you have a massively complex race with all kinds of different elements to it, and in the end, you've got Rick Kelly and Craig Lowndes battling away just as they did for half of the last season. Yeah. Alan Simonson in the other AAA car, DJR team, car 18 now. Alex Davison and Andrew Thompson. Port Umbrella, finally a good day for super cheap auto racing. It's taken nine rounds. Yeah, it certainly is. You know, a good result's always uh, around the corner, and uh, Willie's done a uh, sensational job today along with the team. We, uh, strategy was great. We called both uh, safety cars right on the knocker, and, uh, you know, we're looking good. Whose call was that? Pardon? Whose call was that? Oh, I'd like to say it was mine, but it was Peter, my engineer, and the other guys in the team. Uh, we spoke about it before the weekend. It's very easy to go down a lap here if the safety car comes out, so we called it right this time. Fingers crossed. Very much so, Noons. It's been a great effort, hasn't it? From Paul Wheel and Paul Dumbrell. Dumbrell missed the Queensland Raceway round with a broken finger. But that round, Wheel stepped in for him. Now they find themselves together at top five. starting to sort themselves out as they come towards the final stages. 18 full laps to go. And it's must have an oil leak somewhere in the diff housing. A amount of oil spray on the back of the car tells the story. So both DJR cars now parked. 6.8 seconds, he's pushed away a little bit. From Rick Kelly. Should be able to see it. Here. So Lowndes goes through, so he's with the bottom at Ingle. There's Rick Kelly. So he's second. Corrected, there's Stephen Richards who is third. Garth Tander is a fair whack behind, but he is fourth. And he'll come around into view now. There he is. Behind him with the lights on is Greg Murphy. He's not in the order. But car 33 is of Lee Holdsworth. So you can see what kind of factors they've all got to deal with here. Cars in the way, changing weather conditions. And also the knowledge that there's 17 laps to go. David Bernard still behind the wheel of car four. He's pulled both the windows down in the car now too, so he must be pretty hot inside. Well, those few problems that uh, James had suffered. Well, Alex Davis had a tough day for Jim Beam Racing. Both cars back in the garage now. Oil leak for you. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but the diff started whining like a taxi with 500,000 k's on it and uh, got louder and louder and then we started getting diff temp warnings on the dash and so we had to pull it in. I'd say it's leaking its diff oil out somewhere, but um, I haven't asked yet. Oh, well, better luck with Bathurst. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. Tough one too. His partner Andrew Thompson making his debut here. is car number two of Glenn Seaton. They're 13th. 
and Tony Longhurst have made up seven positions from their start of 20th. Glenn did the opening stint. What did he do? 52 laps and then Tony took it out to lap 109 and now Cedo will bring it home. Tony, who never thought in the life of him that he'd be sitting here this weekend. As a matter of fact, I think he booked himself a date with his lounge on the Gold Coast. Spot in front of the, in front of the telly now. scafey has got that spot. Of course, Mark will be back for Bathurst. And the other Mark, Winterbottom. Seventh and eighth with Russell Ingle. They haven't been nearly as racy, have they? I mean, I know Matthew Halliday went off the road down there before and lost a bit of ground, but uh, just just haven't looked strong in the back end of the race for some reason. Sandwiched between Paul Wheel and Russell Ingle at the moment. Yeah, Neil, I just had a chat to Tim Edwards and asked him the same question. Why, why aren't they as racy? He said, look, we came off the road, but we think the lap times are fine. We got held up and put a lap down. We just have to drive around. But uh, generally, they're, they're OK with the car. It's an interesting thing, really, when you, you talk about track position. It's just, it's everything. You, you saw it early in the day when Max Wilson had come off the road, had a punctured, needed to replace a tyre, came back on and actually raced with the leaders once he had that opportunity, but when you start from further behind, it's a battle, so no issues at Ford Performance Racing, just lost track position, and now they're paying for it. 13 won the last lap, and in fact, the numbers tell the story. Craig Lowndes, 13-3, Rick Kelly, 13-2, so there's nothing wrong with Winterbottom's pace. He's a lap down on the leaders. Some people ask us why the green lights are illuminating the 888 car here. And uh, it's for the nominated co-driver, which in this entry today, Craig Lowndes is the nominated co-driver. Oh, look at that. Straight ahead. Must be wet up the top. Two of them have done it. It must be very wet up the top. Richard Lyons, it's been a very good day for Team Vodafone, but it's come at a cost for your car. Yeah, well, this is it. You know, uh, Alan's uh, done a fantastic first stint. Well, I think we were, I'm not quite sure, we were up to, we were up to about ninth anyway. And we were looking really sound for, you know, maybe top six or even a podium today with the, the car speed. But unfortunately, there's a bit of confusion in the uh, pits. And we lost, uh, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds, but at least 10 positions. So a uh, little unfortunate, yeah. Still in the top 10, though. So not a bad day overall. Yeah, well, we're back into ninth. Uh, so that sort of goes to show how strong the, the car pace is. So, yeah, we're really happy with it all. We'll see you at Bathurst. Cheers, thank you. Certainly will. Richard from Northern Ireland, Alan Simonson from Denmark. Alan behind the wheel. He's in ninth position. It's getting wetter. Yeah, it is. And it was just a little bit too hairy, I think. Very wet over the top of the hill now. Look how dark it is. That weather is getting closer to Melbourne. Right on the edge now of Melbourne certainly in the western suburbs, according to our radar. So they'll, I reckon they might just get home, or maybe not. And if we have another round of pit stops to get on the wets, that could change things again. 14-1 for Lowndes last lap. So he's dropped a second due to the lack of grip. 13-7 for Rick Kelly. Dropped four tenths of a second on him, 5.2 seconds is the margin. Let's have a listen to Craig Lowndes trying to slip and slide around here.
Craig Lowndes has a 5.9 second lead over Rick Kelly. Stephen Richards third, Garth Tander is fourth, Lee Holdsworth is fifth, Paul Wheel is sixth, Ingle seventh, Mark Winterbottom is eighth, Todd Kelly and Alan Nine Simonson go, round out our top ten. And they've dropped into the 15s briefly and back again into the high 13s, low 14s. So tracks playing tricks on them with the grip levels they might get away with this i reckon before the end but the weather's right on the doorstep the race is estimated to finish at about four minutes to five and that radar paint as it cycles through a 40 minute window is up to 15 minutes ago and so it's even further towards the east now than it's showing there so it's right on top so this is a real nail biter because the big question here is if it hammers down, they will need to go to Wentz. But if it stays like it is at the moment, you get away with it. But in trouble, Mark Winterbottom, big trouble. And the Zinger replay, it's an excursion that he has had off. He's now eighth behind Russell Engel, corrected order. This is the problem, Matthew, that the grip varies corner to corner. You know, one minute we were looking at them doing 15s, then they were doing 13s again, and then you get to the next lap and you're in a 14. So each time you arrive at a corner and put the foot on the brake pedal, you hope that it's what you thought it was going to be, and it may not be that in reality in terms of the grip level. 12-9 that lap for Lowndes, so the track's begun to recover again. But a 13-2 for Rick Kelly. Remember, they've got residual heat in these slick tyres, and so you can battle on for a while in these conditions. Just the warmth in the tyre will get you through, cover a multitude of sins with the track surface, but if it gets enough water on it, then you're in strike. And clearly, at the moment, we can see the track looks OK. Beautiful lap, mate. That was uh, three tenths quicker than the first that is second. Thank you. We're all pretty happy at Team Vodafone. He's got control of it at the moment, hasn't he? The only thing that's going to tip it upside down now for any of these guys is having to zap into the pit lane to get tyres. And I don't think anybody's going to do that looking at the conditions. But how close. Amazing. They said late showers. <laughs> it's about right. Kelly has Winterbottom in front of him on the road. Considering the drive-through, it's not a bad recovery for Garth Tander as well for that earlier tour through the pit lane, so his championship remains alive. Positions stay the same. Lounge 5.9 seconds. Rick Kelly did a little bit quicker over the course of that lap. There's the view of the Alcock car. Looking out at Kelly. It was a slow lap then for Stephen Richards at 15 even. 13s for the two leaders. Stevie's in third. He said all weekend yeah, the mate, car's great. Eight second gap back to Todd Lawson. Right mate. Neil, you mentioned the times before of 15s, 14s, 16s, 13s. Just had an update from the toll chopper that's up there, the eye in the sky. There's some swirly rain at the moment. It's not actually hitting the ground. We've had some that has. We'll get another one of those in about four or five minutes. But chopper pilot, he says we should get through dry-ish until the end. You can see the flags now indicating that the wind's coming from the south, the southwest. So uh, it is going to cave in, but I think the race will be done and dusted by then. This will also have an effect on the championship picture. There's only six points the difference coming into this great round job, between... Mate, great job. Have a drink. Have a drink. Garth Tanner and Rick Kelly. If all stays the way it is, Rick will resume as the championship leader. He'll get it back off his teammate. As Neil mentioned, he's done a terrific job. And a nice, solid performance from... Kelly's partner, Paul Radisich.
something interesting to contemplate as we go to Bathurst, Matthew, the cars that have made a One, stop for... Lounge, plus 8.0 to Steve Richards. Made a stop for uh, pads today twice, include cars 5 and 6, Winterbottom and Stephen Richards, and Russell Engel, car 9. That's a discretionary change for them. They've decided to run two sets of brake pads through the front of the car. And then car number 51, due to problems, the Greg Murphy, Jason Richards entry, they took those masking uh, blanks off the front of their brake ducts. But uh, this could be something that is a talking point at Bathurst, people changing brake pads on multiple occasions, or even brake rotors, I've heard some people discussing. Craig Lowndes was six tenths of a second slower than Rick Kelly on that lap. It was a 12.9 for Rick and a 13.5 for Craig. Mark Dutton, engineer for Team Vodafone. Team Principal Roland Dane. They did two equal stints of 56 laps up to their first and second stops. So fairly traditional in the way that they handled it. But they've had car pace all day. They've put their, their double-A driving combination together. And Roland said this morning it didn't bother him who was in the car at any time because he knew that they'd handle all conditions, whatever was thrown up. So all he wanted to do was just play the strategy for tyres and the safety car strategy if need be. Gone with what they know works. Successful combination this. Both of them having a good year individually. We run the form line through back to 2006. We know they were the winners at Bathurst. And top three here at Sandown. Four laps to go, Craig. Four laps to go. 5.1 to the car behind. Nice and smooth, mate. Okay. Here's Mark Winterbottom. His day could have been a whole lot better. It's not too bad. He's eighth. He was out of the car when Matt Halliday had it had off. It really hasn't been enough to have an attack in the latter stages of this race. That'll be something that FPR will be looking for, looking at, to fix for Bathurst. Castro Falcon of Stephen Richards has been out there. A double stinner after Owen Kelly started her off. First time for 21 years that we haven't had his dad in this race. Jim's decided to hang up his helmet in terms of V8 supercar endurance racing. And uh, a couple of weeks ago here in Melbourne, a few of his friends got together to celebrate his 60th birthday. So happy birthday, Jim Richards. And your young bloke, Stephen's doing a great job at the moment. Third for Castrol Ford Performance Racing. It'll be his best performance here. Before that, his best performance was with his dad, actually. In 97 and in 98, he partnered Jason Bright to fifth. But now he looks as though he's going to get on the podium. He was second overall in our last round at Oran Park. We're looking there at Owen Kelly, his co-driver, who did a great job in his stint as well. Owen spent a little bit of time in the US this year, kind of doing a bit of a Marcus Ambrose in some respects. And for... NASCAR late model races between May and June. He's had a pretty good run with FPR because he made himself available in between his travels to make sure that he could do four test days to get comfortable with the car. Put a new windscreen in this car last night. Owen Kelly, great day so far for the Castrol Edge Machine. You started this race, it's been a good day. Yeah, no, so far so good. It's not over yet though, so... Uh... Um, no, Richo's doing a fantastic job and the car's been perfect all day, so um, hopefully uh, it all pans out. How much of a confidence booster is this? It's nice doing Fujitsu races, but this isn't the same. 
Yeah, no, you're right. It's. Um, I mean, we had uh, we have, we've had good pace all day, and uh, it's um, you know it's all gone to plan nicely. We haven't had any dramas. It's been very uneventful actually, so which is what we wanted. Fingers crossed for the last few laps. Yeah, good on you. Cheers. That's exactly right, isn't it? Oh, it's fine. You just want an uneventful race. You kind of want a boring race if you're in that seat. Notice it had both the mirrors folded back on it too, so they've had a little bit of rubbing here and there, but not much, just a little brush. Craig Louds. Last lap, Mr Louds. That's one more lap, Mr Louds now. He's already won three races this year. This is the 24th race of this 37 race season. This will bring him up equal with Mark Scaife for race wins in 2007. Garth Pant is still the bloke totally in command of those numbers with 10. He's already run three times here at Sandown. This is the last lap, mate, and there is a four second gap. Okay, it's all the information he needs to hear. Four seconds back to Rick Kelly. Craig Lowndes. The triple eight car started in position five. Lowndes did the opening segment. Jamie Wincup jumped in. Did a fantastic job. And now Craig Lowndes will bring it around for the final time. And Team Vodafone will take out the first Enduro of 2007. second, Stephen Richards and Owen Kelly third. The Lounds and Wind Cup Enduro Show rolls on. And talk about taking confidence up to the mountain to defend your title, they've got it all. Triple Eight team have done a great job. Good drive too from Rick Kelly, especially. Jamie Wincup. Sorry, Matty. Jamie Wincup, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, what a great team effort! And everyone did their job correctly, and uh, the car was quick. Great, uh, great teammate and Craig. He just does a perfect job, and we uh, we got over the line. It's just. Amazing feeling. The weather was tricky. We had all sorts of things. We had Greg Murphy. We couldn't get past. It was all happening, wasn't it? <laughs> well, we are racing bad supercars, and anything can happen, and it usually does. And uh, the rain was coming, but it held off. And uh, I knew with a couple laps to go, even if it did rain, we still would have run it out on slick. So, uh, no, a great feeling. It gives us all some confidence going into the big one at Bathurst. Well, it's the first. It's another enduro uh, in the cupboard. I mean, the Sandown 500 now has Jamie Wincup as well as Lounsey's name on it. It's a good feeling, mate. It's a good feeling. It's another tick in the in the uh, it's another box tick. So uh, still got another couple to go, but uh, very happy with today's performance. Go and enjoy it. Thank you. Cheers. It has been a really good team performance. Both drivers, good fast car, good setup, good strategy. Good crowds have seen a. Fascinating race unfold here. He just loves it. Now the question is, what does this mean for three weeks' time? It looks like this. Jamie Wincup and Craig Lowndes are the team to beat again, but there's plenty breathing down their neck, including the man who now has the championship lead back, Rick Kelly. Just such a big smile. They did it so well, and they ended up with a 2.72 uh, second gap over Rick Kelly and Paul Radisic. What about the return to the series from the Kiwi? Paul Radisic partners Rick Kelly, and will find himself on the podium in the first Enduro of the year. A terrific effort from Stephen Richards and Owen Kelly. Garth Tander also had that uh, drive-through penalty in pit lane, but he goes top four, and that's vital in terms of the championship picture. 
Here we go from 11 down to 20. Owen and Dalberto in car 55. John Bow did a great job with Jonathan Webb, 12th for those guys. Seaton and Longhurst in car two. Tony Longhurst getting the late call up with an injured Mark Scaife sitting at home. So he gets 13th and gets in the points there. And uh, just saw Paul Morris and Stephen Ellery also, who really got bashed around from the start of this race. As you'd expect in any enduro, there were lots of casualties. And there's the list. It was a pretty, pretty big lineup headed by Alex Davison and Andrew Thompson down to Shane Price and Jack Perkins. The good news for all those guys is they get to have another crack at the big one. The super cheap auto Bathurst 1000 coming up in three weeks time. Craig Lowndes has just completed a salute lap here at Sandown. It's not as though he really needs any encouragement, Neil, is it? No, no uh, we tease him about drinking too much red cordial sometimes, but uh, <laughs> he's an effervescent personality. That was a beautiful drive today for both Craig and for Jamie, and the team did all the things they need to do to make sure that all the boxes were ticked. And uh, we talked about this last night going into the motor race, and we sit around and muse as to who might do what, and it looked like a strong combination. It's springtime, it's Melbourne, it's Sandown. You know you're going to get one of those days where there's going to be variation in the weather and the track conditions, and that plays nicely to Craig's skills. And these fellows were rock solid all day, never looked like being uh, unseated, frankly, and uh, good for them also to get a second car in the top 10. So that's a great performance for the second car, number 88 in that group. He's a winner here in 96, 97, 2005, and now 2007. Lowndes gets his fourth Sandown 500 victory, but for Jamie Winkup, it's his first. And as we said, on the other side of the break, he's starting to tick the boxes just regularly now. Bathurst winner, Sandown winner. One around here in 2007 before, and uh, everything's starting to fall nicely into place for this team. I find it interesting that uh, both Triple Eight and Toll HSV dealer team are again the teams that are rising to the top in these more complex races. And a terrific recovery today by Garth Tander despite the difficulties of having to tour through the pit lane behind us here. Well, the first endurance race of 2007 and we have seen a great weekend of racing at the Just Car Insurance Sandown 500. To make the presentations, Andrew O'Hara, the National Manager for Just Car Insurance, coming up to the podium. And I'd like to invite Andrew to say a few words. Thanks very much. Uh, Just Car Insurance has been very proud to be involved in the event today. And on behalf of everybody at Just Car, I'd like to congratulate all the teams involved and thank the guys at V8 Supercar, IMG and the Channel 7 Network for the presentation and a special thanks to all the fans who came out and supported the Just Car Insurance 500. Thank you. Andrew, thank you very much and thanks for the support of Just Car Insurance. Time for the presentation now and in third place in the Just Car Insurance Sandown 500 for Ford Performance Racing, Owen Kelly and Stephen Richards. Richo, congratulations, you really came home strong. Yeah, look, that was, a, that was a great result. The car was absolutely fantastic. That's the best FPR Falcon I've driven all year. So thanks very much to all the, all the guys today, all the guys back at the workshop. Great result. And well done, Owen. Did, drove a fantastic stint. Owen, congratulations to you. It was a fantastic stint. Nice to have one of those for the mantelpiece. Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, you know, I just had to give it back to Richo in the top ten there and throw him the keys and let him do the rest. And uh, he did a fantastic job. And I want to say thanks to all the guys that are back in the shop that don't come to all the races. And uh, also to Nev at home. We're thinking about you. And Richo, just finally, a, a great indicator heading in towards the Bathurst 1000. Yeah, look, as I said, you know, the last two rounds have, have come on really good for, for Owen and myself. So we're, we're really looking forward to Bathurst. We've got great cars, good car speed, and uh, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Gentlemen, please take your place on the podium. Congratulations. In second place for the Toll HSV dealer team, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Radisic and Rick Kelly. Rick, congratulations. As we said to Richo, you guys just worked away and worked away and really slugged it down in those last, last few laps. 
Yeah, I tell you what, Eric gave me the car in that race. We had exceptional speed, to be honest with you, but um, I didn't have it in qualifying, unfortunately. I made a few mistakes. We dropped back, and Eric and, uh, and especially Paul just did a top job, and I think it shows that we're going to be really strong at Bathurst. But Craig and Jamie, again, did a fantastic job, and we couldn't quite get them. Good on you, Rick. Congratulations. Paul Radisic, great to see you back. Well done. Thanks, Mark. Well, look, um, thanks to Rick. Rick drove a superb race, and uh, the toll team for bringing out a retirement for... Uh, for this event, so I thank them, and I'm really looking forward to uh, finish, looking at the finish line of Bathurst for this year as well. Thank you. Paul, do you think this might be the end of retirement? Well, never say no, right? <laughs> never say no. Congratulations, Paul Radisic and Rick Kelly. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, for Just Car Insurance, the Sandown 500 champions for 2007, from Team Vodafone, Jamie Wincup and Craig Lowndes. <laughs> Jamie, congratulations. Really makes up, I guess, for last year. Great to get this one under your belt and a great opening uh, driving stint for you. Well done. Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, you know, great team effort once again by, uh, by all the Vodafone guys. Everyone did their job and uh, Craig brought it home really nicely at the end. So I'd uh, just like to thank everyone at Ford and Vodafone and uh, thank the team for just an awesome car. <laughs> well, Anzi, you've got a bit of support here. I think they want to say congratulations. Yeah, thanks for that. It's, uh, it's been a, a great weekend for us. Uh, Jamie uh, wanted to step up to the plate. He did a fantastic job and, uh, you know, he did a great job in qualifying. It's always hard to get that one lap right. But as he said, to all the Ford fans here, thank you. <laughs> to Tom Gorman and everyone back at Broadmeadows, uh, hopefully this is uh, a one step forward for us. But to all the guys down here, Triple Eight guys, thank you very much. It was a team effort. Um, to Vodafone, everyone out there, hopefully, uh, you know, we can repeat this now at Bathurst. Lanzi, just before you do go, how are you feeling about getting to Mount Panorama? Well, look, it's always going to be uh, an emotional return every year, but uh, look, it's going to be uh, great for us. We had a strong showing here last year, and uh, basically it's almost the same, well, it's the same teams up here again, but just uh, sort of rotated around. But uh, well, look, we're going to look forward to getting back to Bathurst. We'll put our best foot forward, but uh, there's 30 other cars out there that will do the same. Guys. Congratulations. Take your place on the top of the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, the Just Car Insurance Sandown 500 champions for Team Vodafone, Jamie Wincup and Craig Lowndes. Lowndes pointed out something quite incredible there, isn't it? Two years running, we've had the same teams, different orders and a few different drivers, but the three same teams on the podium here at the Sandown 500. Championship points, what does it mean? This is round nine of the V8 Supercar Championship for 2007. So Rick Kelly now has 443 against Garth Tander, who has 434. So they have flipped. Wing Cup and Lowndes were third and fourth coming into here, so there's been no move on there. And, of course, Mark Scaife doesn't get any points for not driving for this round. Scaifey, I know you've sat through this one. I hope you've had a good day and I hope you're feeling better and are ready to rejoin us at Bathurst in three weeks' time. As the champagne flows on the podium, Rick Kelly, Paul Radisic in second, Stephen, Owen and, uh, Stephen Richards and Owen Kelly in third, and our winners, Jamie Wincup and Craig Lowndes. What does this mean, Cromley? What does it mean for Bathurst? Well, it means these guys are very strong. We knew that they did a great job last year in the endurance races, and uh, we didn't get to see the best of them in the Sandown 500 last year, but they had great pace here. We know what they did together at Bathurst. I wonder whether any teams now might review their strategy in terms of driver pairings going to Bathurst. This double-A combination of these two guys is pretty hard to climb over the top of today. And what an interesting observation made by Craig that the same three teams occupy the podium today as they did last year, but for a switcheroonie, which is interesting. It tells you that good teams and good crew and good drivers, you know, some things never change. Yeah, just want to go back to that point that you made about the driver changes. They can still start to change their driver pairings around for Bathurst. They've got up until the Thursday, I believe. Everybody is cross-centred, of course. So, realistically, how many how many teams do you think would follow the lead of Triple Eight? Oh, they'll debrief this whole process now, uh, tomorrow and Tuesday for the teams. They'll sit down, they'll analyse lap times, they'll talk to their drivers, they'll find out more about the strengths and weaknesses of their cars. They'll get feedback from everybody 
everybody in all the different departments and that'll be a decision that takes quite a while to get to. There may be no changes at all. The fact that both the Toll HSV dealer team drivers have scored solid points today and continue to fight for the championship makes it really tough for Rob Crawford and that group there because they don't want to put a high risk position up for either of their two drivers because it could be all win or all lose. And we all know that strategy is what it's all about in the Enduros. We keep saying it and saying it and saying it. If I highlight the people who came sixth in car 20, Paul Dumbrell and Paul Wheel, that says it all. They started in 25th. They started right down the back and started in 25th, yeah, yeah, and ended up in sixth. They just took advantage. It was a fantastic job by those guys, really opportunistic with their strategy. They stopped on both the safety cars. It was interesting. We only had six laps of safety car period today in total, two of them, the first one for Jason Bright off at turn one and the second one when car number three was stopped at the end of the back straight. Incidentally, just before we do say goodbye, the weather has absolutely yeah. arrived. It's just a massive windstorm going through here now, blowing, blowing these fellas off the top of their car. And uh, they said it was going to arrive late. It did.